Good evening, councillors, ladies and gentlemen, and I welcome you all here to the meeting of the council. Please remain standing. As we welcome members of the public to the meeting of the council, I would like to remind the public that whilst you are welcome to observe the meeting, this is not a meeting that you were invited to participate in. I would also like to emphasize that the safety and security of visitors, councillors and staff attending public meetings remain a priority. In order for us to be able to conduct the business efficiently this evening, I would like to make everybody present aware that if members of the public interrupt proceedings, I will order they will be removed from the premises. Before we formally start the meeting, I would like to invite Councillor Chakrabarty to lead us in a short prayer. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Madam Mayor, respected councillors and guests. I'm most grateful to be allowed to say a Hindu prayer. In Hinduism, we believe in one infinite, uh, eternal God. However, we, pay, we pray to the different attributes of God. You don't have to repeat after me. However, I'll say my prayers now. Om Pur Bhuvaswaha Tat Savitur Varinyam Bargo Devasya Dhimahi Dhiyo Yona Prachodayat The giver of life, the remover of pain and misery, and the source of happiness, may you, the creator of the universe, guide our intellect in the right direction. Om Satchidananda Rupaya Namastu Paramatmani Jyotir Maya Swarupaya Vishwamangale Murte. I bow to the Supreme Lord, who is the very form of truth, consciousness, and bliss, the infinite light and energy which does universal good. Om Janti Mangala Kali Bhadra Kali Kapalini Durga Shiva Shamadhatri Swahasadha Namastute. We bow to thee, Mother Durga, who is the energy, the giver of all happiness and refuge of all beings. Sarve Mangal Mangalye Shiva Sarvata Sadike Sharanye Trambake Gauri Narayani Namastute Karpura Gauram Karunavataram Sansara Saram Bhujagendra Haram Sadavasantam Ridaya Ravinde Bhavam Bhavani Sahitam Namami We bow to thee Mother Durga and Shiva who does good for all and the merciful and compassionate Shiva the recycler of life please reside in a heart thoughts and action and Mangalam Bhagavana Vishnu, Mangalam Garuradhvaja, Mangalam Pundarikaksha, Mangalaya Tanohari. I bow to Vishnu, the preserver of life, who always does universal good, along with Lakshmi, the source of happiness and prosperity. Bukam Karoti Vachalam Pangum Langhete Girim, Yat Kripa Tamahavande, Parmanand Madhavam. We seek your blessings, O Vishnu, to do our daily chore and the seemingly impossible task. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare salutations to Rama and Krishna the avatars of Vishnu and finally Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Ma Kaschit Duk Bhag Bhavet let all be healthy let all be happy may we all see the good in others God bless the king God bless the United Kingdom thank you Namaste thank you councillors please sit Apologies. I have received apologies for the absence of Councillor Maitland, Gilbert, Lloyd and Butt. Do we have anyone any, aware of any other apologies, please? Uh, Councillor Bennett. Thank you. Voting and broadcasting information. This meeting is also being streamlined on the Council Committee meeting YouTube channel. Unless directed by me, the whole of the meeting will be recorded, except where there are confidential or exempt items. Please can I ask all members to speak closely and into the microphone to help us to hear and ensure that speeches are conveyed clearly to the broadcast. Before we proceed with the business, you'll already have noticed that we have another full agenda. As a reminder to all, we require to terminate meeting at 9.30 prompt. I've already set out in an email to you all explaining the measures I will take to manage this evening's agenda. Together, we'll allocate the times for each speech. The times of speeches are set out for the meeting. Thank you. Item one is minutes. The first item is minutes, and I move that the minutes of the meeting be held on the 31st of January 2024 be taken as read and signed as a correct record. Is that seconded? Seconded, Mayor. All those in favour? 
Thank you. Minutes from the Budget Council held on the 21st of February 2024 will be submitted at the next meeting of the Council. And the next item two, can I ask that all announcements be kept to one minute, please? Does the Leader of the Council wish to make any announcements this evening? Thank you, Mayor. Very briefly, there are two people I just wanted to acknowledge because I know that it will be their final council meeting this evening before they retire. Um, two people that I've known for a very long time, two people that have served Trafford Council for decades, two people that when they speak, I listen, and they have made a huge contribution to this council. So can I just say, on behalf of my group and the council, thank you to Councillor Mike Wetton for your years of service, and thank you to Councillor Lawrence Walsh, to you too. I wish I could say more, but it comes from the heart. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Did the chairs of scrutiny committees have anything to announce on behalf of their committee? Councillor Acton? <coughs> Yeah, in, in light of the heavy agenda that we have, I'll, I'll be very brief. Um, we held our last scrutiny meeting of the mun municipal year uh, last week. And I just wanted to say a big thank you to the executive members um, and the officers for attending and supporting our scrutiny meetings. It's absolutely vital and much appreciated by all our members. So thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Sophie Taylor, do you have any announcements on behalf oh, of the committee? Sorry, I, I do apologise, Mayor. Um, sorry, I'm slightly unprepared because I didn't realise that Councillor Book wasn't here. Uh, uh, sorry, yes, we have uh, completed the programme of work, and like Councillor Acton, I would uh, like to acknowledge the contribution of the officers to that um, covered a broad range of topics um, and in particular we have done some task and finish work around the um, uh, contribution of GPs in our community so um, a, a more comprehensive report will follow. Thank you Mayor. Thank you Councillor. Councillor Denise Weston please, one minute. Thank you. Thank you Chair. Um, again I would like to thank the Executive Member and the officers who attend our meetings a uh, huge thank you to uh, the members of the committee for all their hard work this year and a very special thank you to the students from Trafford College who joined us at the last meeting last week. Um, they've certainly given us plenty to think about. So, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Item three is questions and members have submitted seven questions for the meeting this evening, which will be listed on the Council website for members of the public to view. On the basis that I've asked for the responses to be circulated to all councillors and published on the website, I will take the both the question and response as read and move on to the supplementary in each case. I ask that each response, supplementary question and supplementary response is kept to 30 seconds each, please. And we have 10 minutes allocated for this agenda item. At the end of the 10 minutes period, I will bring the agenda item to a close and any outstanding questions or responses not dealt with must be picked up outside the meeting and any such questions or responses will be published on the Council website. And we have the first question from Councillor Z, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, could Council join me to meet representatives from the Austrian Girls Grammar School and the landowner to discuss a resolution? Thank you. Is, um, is that seconded, please? Is that, oh, sorry, it's the response, please. Sorry, um, Councillor Ed said. Thank you, uh, Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Z, for your question, uh, your supplementary. Uh, obviously, if you contact us after the uh, Council meeting, I think we're quite happy to see what arrangements we can make. Obviously, the, the Council itself is not really a proper form to discuss this sort of casework, so I think we need, uh, we're quite happy to meet with officers and so forth afterwards. So if you get in touch with us, we see what arrangements can be made. Thank you, thank you Councillor. Councillor Z, you have a, a second uh, question. Response, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. No, no supplementary questions. Thank you. <coughs> question three, Councillor Duncan. Please, you have 30 seconds. Yes, thank you. It's regarding the um, question regarding um, the damp and mould. 
Um, I have asked the uh, Labour Council to consider that they um, ad readdress uh, um, approaching the social landlords to provide temporary accommodation whilst the properties become habitable from um, residents that unfortunately find themselves in a position of damp and mold problems. So can the council please reconsider this stance and support their uh, residents? Thank you, councillor. Thank you. Could I have a response from councillor Wright, please? Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, I'm happy, we're happy to look, obviously we're happy to support our tenants in any way that sees fit. If a property is inhabitable, then obviously we'll do absolutely everything we can to house someone temporarily. Um, if the property is inhabitable because of a social landlord and the fact that they're not dealing with the damp and mould and it is their fault, it would, would genuinely be their responsibility to rehouse them in another, in another um, house of theirs or another part of their stock. However, of course, if that wasn't available, Trafford Council would be more than willing to step in and help in that situation. And we will, of course we will continue to, um, to, to push social landlords to deal with the problem as, as we always have done. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, Councillor Franz, you have the response to the first question. Do you have a supplementary question, please? Uh, yes, Madam Mayor. So, in relation to reallocation, possibly a budget for Longford Park, if it comes up. For years, residents in my ward have asked why they have to look at a heap of rusty old metal in Buckingham Way Park in Timperley, where barricades surround the remains of a broken old swing. I have lobbied and cajoled and begged the place directorate to get the eyesore removed. We live in hope of a tiny underspend at the end of each financial year. But given Longford Park's voracious appetite for budget how many more years will we have to wait in Timperley to fix this simple job thank you thank you councillor could we have a response please from councillor patel thank you i don't um cover directly um capital funding to parks the reply uh, that was provided to councillor frass explains how it's wholly appropriate for the council to commit to securing the benefits bought to the through the longford park initiative uh, Longford Park welcomes residents from right across the borough. The tram line provides a direct link from both north and south. It's a wonderful da family day out in Longford Park. Um, even more so, it will be after this investment. I suggest um, Councillor Frass takes that um, casework inquiry up um, through the Green Spaces team. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Question five. Councillor Taylor, you've had a response from your question. Do you have a supplementary question, please? And you've got 30 seconds. Uh, uh, in relation to the park itself, thank you very much for, for the response. Uh, it's just, as Councillor Frash pointed out, a lot of money has been spent on, on the north of the borough, whereas Halecroft Park in my ward still has broken fences, a, a pond that is unsafe for children and also overgrown meadows. So it would be great if the residents of my local area could actually have their park made into the, something similar to Longford Park, where all the money is currently <laughs> being pumped. Councillor. Can we have a response, please? Thank, thank you, you Mayor, and uh, thank you for your uh, supplementary uh, question, Councillor Taylor. Uh, I am aware from uh, my regular uh, meetings with Green Space Officers that Halecroft Park does come up quite regularly at those meetings. <coughs> I'm aware that there have been regular meetings between the Green Space Officers and indeed the local, local Fence of Parks groups, and a lot of issues have been resolved, including the pond and so forth. So that's actually all in hand there. Uh, and, and I understand it has been agreed with the Fence Group, so uh, I'd obviously, I've got first I can't respond to much more, but if you want to discuss it further with me or, or as later, say this form is not really a place to actually deal with this sort of problem. Thank you, Councillor. Yes. Councillor Evans, this is question six. You have had a response to your question. Do you have a supplementary, please? Thank you, Madam Mayor, uh, and thank you uh, to the Executive Member for the response, specifically the table, which was helpful. Um, thank you for the additional 300 places in the south of the borough at Altrim, Altrim College of Arts, and I appreciate that's cross school. Um, Loretto Grammar and St Ambrose are unique, as would be St Bede's in Manchester being specifically Catholic schools, so they draw from a wider area because they are specifically Catholic schools. There have always been an exchange of students between Manchester, Trafford and Cheshire. I know that in the 70s, Stretford Grammar School took hundreds of kids from Manchester's Moss Side. I know because I was there, they were my friends. Many students from Trafford went elsewhere. Thank At you, what Councillor. level would you consider Thank you, expanding Councillor. the schools in the South? Can we have a response, please? Thank um, you. I, as I said in my written response, we have um, no no need to expand. The table that I provided shows that 
grammar schools are taking between 10% and 54% of pupils out of area. There is no way, as a council, we would be expanding schools to enable them to take more children from out of area. So my suggestion is that you work with the schools. There are the, if, if, schools if the grammar schools prioritised 80% of Trafford children, our sufficiency problems wouldn't be there. Question seven. Councillor Newgarsh, you've had a response to the question. Do you have a supplementary, please? I do, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Wright, for that detailed response, in which I note the number of long-term empty private homes brought back into use under your policy in the last four years seems to be two. Cognizant of the vote we're about to take on Places for Everyone, long-term empty homes have increased 50% during your empty homes policy. Correct me if I'm wrong, Councillor Wright, but wasn't the intention of the policy to reduce long-term empty homes. As such, how would you judge your performance in this key indicator? Councillor Wright, can you respond, please? Thank you. Thank you for your supplementary, Councillor Newgross. Um, I, think, I, th I don't think Councillor Newgross quite understands the uh, complexities behind bringing long-term empty properties back into use. And, and, and I think Councillor Newgross has, has previously said in this chamber and to me as well that he, he, he seems to think that long -term, bringing long-term properties back into use will somehow uh, solve some of the housing crisis, which is just not true. Um, the performance of the team has been excellent. Uh, you, may, you, may, um, you may make mark remarks about only two being brought back into use. It's a very small team with very limited resources. Thank you, Councillor. And they work incredibly hard to get these properties back into use. We want them back in use. We're doing Thank our you, best. Thank you, Councillor. Item four is a petition requesting safer school runs for pupils of Oldfield Brow. Received 508 signatures. I would like to extend a warm welcome to the petitioners this evening. In accordance with the Council petition scheme, timing are allocated to each speaker. I will now invite Claire Knowles and James Cash to introduce the petition and you have five minutes between you, please. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening to you all. My name is Claire Knowles and I live in Oldfield Brow in Altrincham. You may be aware that I have recently been working on a petition with help from local councillor Schenke and help from Bridget Green, for which we have collected 536 votes. This petition has been designed to raise awareness to keep the roads around the perimeters of Oldfield Brow Primary School and Taylor Road safe. An incident, or what I prefer to call a near miss, occurred last September, which prompted me to join forces with our amazing community and ask our local council for help in putting our children, children's safety first. A car that we, we believe to be stationary suddenly reversed up Stokoe Avenue, narrowly missing my six-year-old daughter by a few inches as she took one step off the curb. This was the corner of Stokoe Avenue that meets Taylor Road. Our children are in dire need of a zebra crossing here. This corner is very, bu very busy at school times and is now proving dangerous. It doesn't help matters when cars continue to park on double yellow lines. After speaking with other parents outside our school, my daughter Harper sadly isn't the only child to be involved in a near miss. It has been reported that a child was hit by a van on this very corner. Fortunately, the child did not suffer serious injuries, but I'm sure you will all agree that we cannot allow these incidents to happen again. Hello, my name is James Cash and I'm the head teacher of Oldfield Brow Primary School. Um, unfortunately, the incident that Claire describes is not isolated and as a school we've received almost daily reports of near misses involving our pupils. The causes of these incidents vary wildly from parking that obstructs the views of other road users to very dangerous driving. During our recent parent carer survey completed in March this month after parents evening, parking and road safety came up as the single biggest concern for our parents and carers. Uh, relating to the school. Despite numerous attempts uh, to physically police the area with school staff and also remind road users of their duties within the law, these incidents do not de decrease and instead follow a predictable pattern of a slight surface level improvement following a communication and then very quickly reverting to the dangerous driving and parking that we see around school. And it, quite frankly, it's putting the lives of our children and wider community at risk. It's a school's firm belief that stronger measures are needed to enforce parking and driving restrictions in order to keep our children safe. Thank you very much. 
Uh, Councillor uh, Adset as executive. Um, sorry. So we're not quite finished yet. We're just. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Go sorry. ahead. <laughs> right, sorry. Parents and carers have voiced their concerns. Children have voiced their concerns. The elderly have voiced their concerns. And our school, our whole community, is asking our council to help. When preparing for this speech, I thought it was important that we gathered the voices of our school's most important asset, uh, our exceptional learners. I'd like to share some of their voice with you today, as they can't be here. I've brought two of my wonderful learners here. We have Will, and uh, sorry, Thomas, Will's older brother, Thomas and Dylan, who are year four representing our school in the gallery today, and I want them, this is their voice. Dylan, in year four, stated that I did not feel safe when travelling to school because of the dangerous parking and driving at the beginning and end of the school day. I feel that the area around the school should be just for children to walk safely. I'm, um, I'm going into year five soon. I would like to begin to walk to school on my own towards the end of the school year, but I don't feel safe enough to do that at the moment. When I asked him what he would like the council to do, he said, make it safer by stopping cars parking and driving dangerously. Adults need to be told if they're not doing the right thing, just like children. Uh, I also think that we should lower the speed limit around the school too. Tom, uh, Thomas, who's there as well, hello Thomas, said that he wants to see change, very adamant. Walking to and from school is not safe. He conveyed, me and my friends have nearly been hit by cars and his dad's here and confirm he is one of the emails that has come through to me at the school office. Um, I think we need to have safe spaces to cross the road and to help me and my friends feel safe. Um, as mentioned previously, our school's office email is inundated regularly with reports of illegal parking, dangerous driving and near misses. Prior to me starting at the school, I can confirm what Claire said, and there was a child who was hit outside the school. It was, fortunately, that child is okay, but that did happen um, outside Stoke Avenue. Despite engagement with the police and living streets, very little progress has been made and parking and driving violations continue to plague our local area. As the head teacher of Oldfield Brow, one of your Trafford schools, the safety and happiness of every pupil in our school is of my paramount concern. My school community are telling me that they do not feel safe on their commute to and from school on a daily basis. This is unacceptable, and I, along with my parent community, are seeking the help of you to ensure that this most basic right to safeguard our children and all involved. And I'm going to end with Claire. Thank you so much. Uh, we Council desperately has... need zebra crossings or school crossing patrols. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I think you're out of time. Sorry. Thank you. Um, Councillor Adset, as Executive Member of Highways, Environment and Trade and Services, I invite you to respond on behalf of the Labour Group. You have three minutes and 45 seconds. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam. Thank you, uh, Claire and James, for your petition, and indeed all the people that have signed the petition. Uh, particularly things like safety around schools is something that uh, ourselves and, and our administration that they take very seriously. One of the first things I did when I became executive member was to set up a special working group, which is still meeting now, safety around schools group comprising uh, senior officers and, and appropriate executive members, and we meet uh, a number of times throughout the year and we look at all issues. One of the reasons I set this up particularly was to, uh, primarily to look at parking situations and make sure they have proper yellow lines around that and parking enforcement. Uh, and uh, just earlier today, I think one of the councillors, I can't remember who it was, sent some photographs around of the situation at the school around there. I think, unfortunately, the photographs could have been virtually many, or probably most primary schools around Trafford. It's not unique, very unfortunately. I think it is uh, th very sad that we still have these problems despite all the work that's going on, and it's something that we continue to try and tackle and will uh, make further efforts. But what we can do as well, for instance, uh, I'm, I've I'm aware that you know, things have been requested, such as uh, for speed limit. It has been or will be added to the uh, to the list for 20 zones around the school area. Uh, there's going to be some uh, no idling engine signs put up as well, which has been requested. But also, uh, what we're going to be doing, obviously, is uh, what, what is speaking with the school, and indeed parking services, and indeed there's also a local PCSO. Each school has a name PCSO. We should work with that school, particularly there. Uh, and, they and they should be uh, looking at all these sorts of problems and working with parking services and actually catching these people. It is something we want to do much harder and, and actually lay down on these people that parking outside schools is dangerous and should not happen. Uh, and we will do all we can within our powers and resources to actually tackle this at every school that we actually can. That there is a, 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 a review of all schools each, during each year on, on priority stages to bend on the problems and nature of it and lays on his held with the schools on a regular basis. There are things also that the schools can actually take part in to actually help reduce the number of cars 
and there are things like obviously like mode shift which encourages uh, people to actually uh, find other ways of getting to uh, the school whether they're employed at school or the parent there's also projects like walk once a week which is now free of charge to all schools which is small rewards for all children walking to school and it becomes quite competitive it's very good and i know that schools have taken this up actually very they good they get the they pet the kids actually badging their parents to actually let them walk so they can uh, come up uh, higher up on the mark there's a little chart in the in the school that says how many miles each child has walked and when they reach certain levels they get little badges and rewards and it becomes very competitive so so there's all those sorts of things that are going on at the moment and and say so that's it might be something that yourselves certainly i'll, I'll be chasing myself to make sure schools are aware of it and and indeed say and we'll actually see what we can do further around the parking enforcement of the yellow lines so it will be lazing with not just parking crews but also local PSCF who should actually be hopefully lazing with yourselves as well. I'm not sure who that person is at the moment, it's not my area, but obviously we'll try and find and get you that information there. So hopefully but we're on the right step to doing things. Uh, you, you will be added to a list to be assessed for things like a crossing if it's appropriate and so forth. Uh, these things are very complicated. So, so obviously we do everything that we can there, but obviously but officers will are putting together a response and that response should be with you shortly. Uh, and obviously after that you can come uh, back to us and the local council so we can see what how we can implement some of those measures there it's clearly a lot of work to do but we take safety around all schools every service it's something that's at my heart that's one of the things that i see as a priority for us doing this and even please during the next year we've actually had a few more 20 zones going through i just wish we had more resources to use on a more regular basis though i would like to actually implement across all the schools that don't currently have them but unfortunately we can't do them all at the same time so uh, dealing with them is a priority for us so, and I'm being timed out now. There's so much more I could say, but thank you for coming and obviously look forward to working with you to try and actually help with this problem. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Is there a speaker on behalf of the Conservative group, please? And you have three minutes and 45 seconds. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Claire. Thank you, James. Uh, serving as a councillor for the Bowden Ward, including Oldfield Brow community, I'm fully backing this petition. My commitment to our children's safety and well-being is, uh, is unwavering and absolute. Imagine you stand out, you stand outside the Oldfield Brow Primary School at 3:30 on any given school day. You will see a very busy and crowded junction of Taylor Road and Stokeo Avenue. Parents, children, cars, and the buses are all there. Unfortunately, due to reckless parking and driving behaviours, it brings significant risks to pedestrians, including students and their families. This issue demands our immediate attention and action. As representatives of our community, we must recognise the urgency and importance of this issue. The daily commute to and from the school shouldn't be a source of anxiety of our children and their parents. Yet, as it stands, the lack of effective speed control measures, inadequate signage, and the inappropriate parking and the driving behaviours have created a safe environment for our youngest and the most vulnerable residents. Last year, over 2,000 children were seriously injured or lost their lives on roads across Britain. This is not just a number, but a call to action a call to prevent our community from contributing these distressing numbers. Today, we are presented with a critical opportunity to implement meaningful measures to safeguard our children. The proposals outlined in the petition, including the introduction of a school crossing patrol, installation of zebra crossing and speed bumps, and upgrading road safety signage are not just feasible, they are imperative. As a member of this council, it is our duty to listen, to care, and to act. I urge each one of you to support this initiative. By doing so, we are not only enhance the safety of our roads, but also the quality of lives in our community. Let's send a clear message within our borough. The safety of our children takes priority. Thank you, Councillor. Do we have... Um Speaker, on behalf of the Liberal Democrats, please. Yes, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Firstly, Claire, James, thank you for all the work that you've done to present this tonight. Uh, I know it's no small achievement to get more than 530 signatures to bring it before the full council. Petitions like this make sure that we're not just talking amongst ourselves, something we do all too often. It means that we face the issues that are important to people outside these walls, especially parents, 
teachers and, in fact, young people who've made the effort to come here tonight, which is fantastic. Pollution from cars continues to threaten both our planet and our health, and the petitioners have made some excellent points. I'd like to emphasise the fact the harmful effects of pollution on the developing lungs of young people. That's well known. On parking and safety issues, we seem to be stuck in a bit of a vicious circle. When I go and knock on doors, when I speak to parents, they, many of them wish it was easier and safer to be able to walk and, and take their children to school that way. But because there are so many cars creating those blind corners when they park, it's not safe to cross the road. Because there's so much speeding of traffic, they feel it's not safe for the young ones to cycle. So what do they do? Many of them start to take their children to school in the car. So we've got this, this vicious cycle here. So we've seen the photos that were circulated tonight, and there is some inconsiderate parking. It does become a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Now, to be clear, the Liberal Democrats fully support the aims of this petition. We also know that the design, the, the highways approval, the cost for things like zebra crossings, the regulations for 20 mile an hour zones are really hard to resource. But I sincerely hope, when I look to the administration, that given the notice we had of this petition, we can at least commit to some of those simple requests like the slow markings to be painted on the roads, like the extra school signs. I know that our contractors, Amy, have the no idling uh, signs which they could put up on the lampposts. So I hope we can make that happen soon. I noticed the school routes audit from 2023 already made a lot of recommendations, painting faded road markings, surfacing uneven pavements, greater attendance by traffic wardens. Again, I think those are fantastic recommend recommendations. We should be doing them. However, I must issue you a word of warning and caution. My Liberal Democrat colleague, Councillor Minnis, spoke not four months ago in response to a very similar petition in Timpley North. Like yourself, the petitioners presented clear arguments that were very hard to ignore. And like tonight, we have warm words from the Labour Party. We were not promised a new zebra crossing overnight. I get that. I really do. But we are struggling four months on to get anywhere with some of those simple, quick fixes like the signs. I feel it's very easy for solutions like that to get kicked into the long grass. But you have the full support of the Liberal Democrats on this. We need to show residents that we can take some quick and simple solutions soon. I worry. The cars outside Oldfield Brow are too fast. But all too often Trafford Council is too slow. Thank you, Councillor. Do we have a speaker from the Green Party, please? Thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, as uh, councillors for this area until the boundary change, uh, we certainly helped with the original 20 mile an hour petition, which had 171 signatures and was lodged with the council and has brought no action. So we really hope that this one does, it does better. And we want to thank Claire and James and everyone who promoted and signed this petition. Um, one of the last acts uh, that I, I did personally as an Oldfield Brow partnership was to take part in the school route audit with kids from the school, the deputy head and Paul from Living Streets. Um, I sent the survey round to members for information yesterday. Uh, it has a comprehensive list of recommendations that would address most of the concerns in the petition. Now, we know lots of schools need safety improvements on the roads near them, so why should Oldfield Brow Primary be a priority? And what the petition doesn't say, but has been said tonight, is that a school from uh, a child from the school was hit by a van at the Stoko Avenue Taylor Road junction and taken to hospital on, uh, in 2022. Fortunately, the child was not seriously hurt, but it could have been much worse. And the school streets audit was commissioned in response. I sent the school streets report to Bowdoin's Conservative councillors last year as a handover courtesy, but got no thanks or response. And to my knowledge, none of the recommendations have been pursued since. So it's not surprising then that frustrated residents have returned with an even bigger petition than is being, uh, than, uh, that is being heard today. And I really hope the administration will act on the genuine concerns of residents expressed and the recommendations already in the school route audit. Um, and I would just say to the Conservative group that residents are tired of you trying to have it both ways on this issue. <coughs> You stand here supporting the petition's call for 20 mile an hour limits on one part of Oldfield Brow, but you oppose them for other residential areas in the borough. How can we support 20 mile an hour outside a child's school, 
but for the rest of that family's journey to school, we're happy for them to contend with vehicles on residential roads going at 30 miles an hour or often above. You know, it's a real shame that the national government has U-turned on policies to support working, walking and cycling initiatives and is now actively campaigning against 20 mile an hour limits and slashing the amount of money available for schemes that make it safer to walk and cycle. We see local newsletters like this one that talk about the 20 mile an hour push, um, which is punishing car users, apparently. You know, road safety improvements are, um, uh, that help kids walk and cycle across busy major roads, roads are called a war on motorists. But with 40 million vehicles on the road, let me tell you about the war on our children's safety. Let me tell you about the war on our children's freedom to walk and cycle around independently. Yeah? You can, it's easy to play to shout, a shouty minority on social media groups, but we prefer to listen to what we hear on the doorsteps in Oldfield Brow and in our emails. Local people consistently tell us they, they want lower traffic speeds, they want action on illegal parking, they want clean air, and they want not just one junction on the A56 redesigning to make it safer to cross, but all of them. If anybody was at the B Network Fun Day at John Lee Park on Sunday, they'll have seen the heart of the local community. Hundreds and hundreds of local kids and families turning out for an active travel event, celebrating the changes that are being made to help their kids walk and cycle safely. The heart of the community is in that event, and, and the voice of the community is in this petition brought to us today. Today, we have the opportunity to ensure that community is being heard. And we need to speak up for this community at a national level and tell the government that their so-called plan for motorists is basically a plan that encourages more people to drive and is a plan that will make things worse outside schools like Oldfield Brow Primary School and not better. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, finally, the leader of the council summarises what will now happen with, what, with the petition. Thank you. Thank you, leader. Thank you, Mayor. And can I thank Claire Knowles and James Cash again for your wonderful presentation there and for using the voice of children and young people in it as well. And I do hope when we've had you know, future petitions on any matters that the voice of the child can come down to the meeting itself and address us uh, personally. But thank you. Um, it's not gone unnoticed by me and many in our group that uh, a lot of the petitions we've had this year have been around road safety crossing you know more, more, more safer uh, around the schools it, it it is a theme and just to build a little bit on what uh, councillor welton has just said it, it it is clear that there is a public concern and a public wish for us to do more around safer crossings reducing um, reducing cars around schools making sure that more more area is given over to pedestrians in terms of our highways and that is something i can assure you that this administ administration takes very very seriously councillor ads had um, alluded to the school streets that we've been trialing out across parts of the borough um, some have been incredibly successful and we're looking at that learning from that and we'll be bringing that into the new municipal year as to how we can work with transport for greater manchester and other partners to make sure that we're able to get more of those projects out across the, the borough um, we launched last year our walking, wheeling and cycling strategy and that is very much important for our young people and families to get around and not have the barriers of cars in the way, street furniture, anything that makes walking or cycling to school or to any other place difficult. We are using that strategy, looking at how we can bring that strategy to life to reduce car usage but more importantly make it a safer and a healthier option for people to travel to school. Um, I have built very good relationships with Dame Sarah Storey. She's our active travel um, ambassador for, for Greater Manchester. And over the last over 12 months now, we have been looking at how we can work together from a Greater Manchester level, transport for Greater Manchester level, and from Trafford Council level to look at how we can make things safer for people in terms of getting to and from places, but particularly around schools. And she was very interested in the school streets concept and the little things, the things that should, shouldn't take too long to do, but we could do pretty quickly to try and resolve issues. And we've also got our Vision Zero strategy at Greater Manchester as well, as we, as we look towards reducing fatalities in terms of the, the, the impact that cars have on roads. So there are a lot of things that we're doing from a Greater Manchester level with the Mayor of Greater Manchester, with Dame Sarah Story, which we will work, continue to work closely with within Trafford Council to, to respond to your petition. The previous petition and Councillor Frass, we are agreeing to the slow down signage. So there is stuff going on and the, uh, there is active discussion still between officers and, um, and, and ourselves as to that petition. And it will be the same with you. Please rest assured, we are not going to just give warm words and dismiss this. We will look at everything that we can do within the tight resources we have at the moment 
And with that, we will look at other resources. We will work closely with our partners at Transport for Greater Manchester to see what else we can do together to make things safer for everyone. We, it's great that so many people want to see safer streets, and we're very much in favour of that. And so it's about working together, keeping the dialogue open. You know, this is the start of a conversation now, I feel, and we will look at what we can do, and then hopefully, as resource allows, replicate that across the borough as well for everyone. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you to the two young people in the gallery, and um, let's keep this conversation going. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. And thank you very much for the petition. Item five, adoption of places for everyone's plan. Item five is a report on the adoption of places for everyone plan. Each party will be allowed one speaker and they will have five minutes each. The proposal of the report have four minutes to introduce the report. We'll also be given one minute at the end to sum up. The second, they will be given two minutes. I now invite the executive member for economic and regeneration to introduce the report and move the recommendations. And you have four minutes, thank you. Thank you. This report tonight marks the final stage in the adoption of Places for Everyone in Trafford, <coughs> a journey that started in 2014. It's testament to the soundness of the plan, the political determination shown regionally, and the diligent hard work of local authority planners in Trafford and across GM that we are here today. It's a plan worth fighting for, marking a new era in regional collaboration, a UK trailblazer in plan-led sustainable growth, all involved in its development and adoption should feel extremely proud of what's been achieved so far. Having considered the last stage of consultation, the planning inspector reported to GMCA on the 15th of February 2024 that the plan, plan is sound, complies with all relevant legal requirements and provides an appropriate basis for the planning of the nine boroughs. Following an approval here tonight, we adopt the Places for Everyone Joint Development Plan 2022 with effect from the 21st of March, incorporating the main and additional modifications as part of the development plan for Trafford. We do this as it provides a positive, sustainable vision for Trafford's future. Places for Everyone represents a bold plan for sustainable housing growth in Trafford, tackling the housing crisis head on, investing in well-designed neighbourhoods and critically the associated community infrastructure needed alongside those new homes. Places for Everyone is a, is a plan for affordable housing, education, health, transport, jobs and skills. It provides us locally with targets for housing, office and industrial floor space, which will inform our upcoming local plan. Those housing requirements in Trafford are around 20% lower as a result of our inclusion in Places for Everyone than should we seek to go it alone. It provides a robust regional framework of environmental protections, including nature restoration, enhancing green and blue infrastructure and significant enhancement of biodiversity and geodiversity. Places for everyone will maintain a new and defensible green belt, which will endure beyond the plans period, noting recent planning inspectorate decisions that have overturned refusals for residential developments in Stockport, Bolton and indeed here in Timperley. Through Places for Everyone, we can avoid this planning by appeal approach, providing certainty for communities and developers. I recognise that opposition still exists to the release of Greenbelt within Trafford to support our future housing growth. Those arguments have been presented by Greenbelt campaigners at length through the public examination, but haven't held up or convinced. After years of debate, we are moving forward now. This adoption of Places for Everyone is not an end point, but the beginning of a new stage of work. Development at Timperley Wedge and New Carrington must be undertaken in accordance with a master plan that's been the subject of public consultation. We commit to working with local residents in a meaningful way on these master plans as we seek to set out the parameters of, de of development and infrastructure needed to provide the best outcomes and benefits for existing and new communities. We are underway with training our planning committee members for which this will become a working policy document that they must positively engage with and we look to provide training on places for everyone to all members in the new municipal year. Finally, I would like to thank officers within our strategic planning team, Richard Rowe, Adrian Fisher, Caroline Wright, Sarah Todd, and all officers past and present who have contributed to Places for Everyone. Thanks too to colleagues in Greater Manchester Combined Authority and across GM. I think we've finally done it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Is that seconded, please? 
seconded, Mayor, and this truly is a momentous occasion as we come to the end of what has been a 10-year process with Places for Everyone, also known as the Spatial Framework. Um, it's so important that we adopt this tonight and join our members of our GM family, our eight other local authorities that are adopting the Places for Everyone, everyone because it's proportionate, it helps us all, and it sets out a really exciting and bold plan for the future. Councillor Patel has mentioned about the housing need that we have, and we do have a housing need in this borough. If we want our children and grandchildren to live in this borough, we need to have the housing supply in place. So that is why it's so important to this Labour group that we support this, uh, this, this motion today. However, there are other things to consider as part of Places for Everyone. The approach that it will have around sustainable development, the policies that we'll have around decarbonising the city. Looking at heat and energy networks, the policies covering flood, flood risk and water in, uh, environments, the pol policies covering green infrastructure network, policies to protect riv val rivers, valleys and waterways, net enhancement of biodiversity and geodiversity to make sure that all sites have a measurable 10% net gain for biodiversity. There is a lot of good things in Places for Everyone that don't just address our housing need, but also make sure that we protect the environment as best we can and make it fit for the future. And as the Green City Legion portfolio holder for Greater Manchester, that was incredibly important to me. So thank you to Councillor Patel. Thank you to our officers past and present. Thank you to leaders past and present for everything that they've done to bring this forward. I'm proud that we're putting this to council today and I hope everyone approves it. Thank you. Thank you, Lena. Is there a speaker on behalf of the Conservative Party, please? And you have five minutes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I've long been campaigning on this issue, particularly around the development of Carrington Moss, and I have concerns regarding the development on Timberley Wedge. So talking about Timberley Wedge, thank you to Lib Dems for turning up today. There are limited amounts of green spaces within Trafford for residents to enjoy, and there are long-standing historic ties towards areas of land earmarked for development in the Places for Everyone plan. Residents of Trafford have come together in many instances to form friends of groups to argue for the protection of a number of spaces marked for development, for instance, Friends of Carrington Moss and Save Timberley Wedge. The housing target numbers in the Places for Everyone plan is based upon housing targets that national government has since re-evaluated, and it is acknowledged that these housing targets are over-ambitious. Many of the sites in the Places for Everyone plan, Carrington included, are currently poorly served by public transport and road infrastructure. Additionally, when arguing there are infrastructural concerns regarding school places, and asking whether the increase in number in Trafford would create more need for school places, school places, this council has at prior meetings stated this would not be an issue due to a declining birth rate. Given the declining birth rate, however, this council has not deemed this an area of concern regarding the overall places for everyone plan, nor does it seem worried about the potential for overdevelopment. This council often says that there is no other alternative than to push forward with the Places for Everyone plan. However, this is not the case. As we have seen in Stockport, where the local authority area withdrew from the Places for Everyone plan, this council will argue that count Stockport's plan is taking longer than the Places for Everyone plan. This is true. However, taking time to consider all the details of local planning arrangements is a good thing. It is right that local authorities deliberate and seriously consider the details of any local planning arrangement and its effect on the local area. As part of its corporate plan, this council claims to want to address the climate crisis. At the same time, this council has agreed to a plan which intends to build in Carrington on peat moss, which acts as a carbon sink and is carbon negative. This is a strange decision, to say the least, for a council which claims to want to reduce the level of carbon emissions in the borough, which it is failing at. 
especially strange when you consider that the United Nations Environment Program estimates that as much as 10% of all annual fossil fuel emissions arise from drained and burned peatlands. As Councillor for Man Award, and on behalf of our group, I would like to express a profound objection and disagreement with this council's plan to push ahead with the Places for Everyone plan. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Is there a speaker on behalf of the Liberal Democrats, please? Yes, Mayor. Thank you very much. Well, here we are 10 years on. Countless protests, debates, votes, exchanges, and as we now realise, the uh, odd Damascan conversion over those years have made this a contentious topic, to say the least. The Liberal Democrat group don't need to miraculously see the light on this issue, unlike some, such as the local Conservative group, who placed Timpley Wedge and Carrington Moss into the GM master plan in, originally in 2014 when they ran Trafford Council. We've always been opposed to this plan. And to be fair, we, we thought we'd give you a chance to ask the questions you needed to to catch up on Monday. You know, you need to do your research. Um, in fact, it's a matter of public record that our opposition to building on the wedge goes back even further. The plan does nothing for Timberley. In fact, it will make an already stretched services break under the pressure it will bring. The environmental impact studies are done. We acknowledge the protection placed on the Davenport Green Pools and the proposed country park However, that is where our gratitude ends on this matter. The evidence of culverts and historic hedgerow designed and in place to maintain the land and protect it from flooding and water saturation, we unfortunately, unfortunately already know all too well the effects of building without considering where water goes in Timpley. So what will happen to this area once built on, or is council just hoping to repair the damage later on once residents start complaining? We are promised Northern Powerhouse Rail will fill the void left by HS2. Promises broken over and over by this current government and not much faith in the next government following through with the state of our national finances. So where will this leave us? Of course, the buses and bicycles. But wait, bus infrastructure won't be built and placed alongside the development and neither will cycle lanes. Those guarantees were removed from the plan last March and haven't reappeared since. Go back and watch last year's March Full Council. So we are left with two and a half thousand houses with quite possibly two or three cars on each drive. The plan's re response, a new trunk road linking Timpley with the M56 and Manchester Airport. No plan for Thorley Lane or Ridgeway Road to allow them to cope with the excess traffic this development will bring. Personally, I wonder where the new tram line is or if it will ever get built at all. Leisure allocation on the plans, but what? No confirmed shops? post office, local pub or pharmacy confirmed. I hope the new residents like the walk into Timpley or Hale Barnes for a drink and don't just bypass us for other areas in their cars. School provision has been spoken of at length in the borough and will do, no doubt continue as these homes are built. However, seeing as the government has made the decision about our lack of need, new money for a new school, either primary or secondary, will merely be a pipe dream. Then we get to a GP. I'll leave it to the Tories to explain away the damage they have done to that profession before coming up with some excuse that kicks it down the road. Ultimately, we don't need to build a GP practice or healthcare centre as there's no staff to run it. Oh. Oh. Now we ask who will be moving into these wonderful houses, 45% of which apparently are affordable. Well, not who you would think, to be honest. Affordability rates are not set by government or council, council, but by the developers, themselves based on a local postcode average. The average price for a detached property in WA15, as of today, is £990,969, which means the developers will use that figure and reduce by 20%, which is our affordability standard, and mean them selling those new homes for £792,775.20. I want to know who in this chamber is able to afford a house like that. And calling them affordable. The truth is there are simply palaces for everyone who can't afford them. There's no social housing built into this plan. There's no rent to buy, there's no shared ownership, 
The development will be a soulless desert of car driving homes with no character or integration, burdening our overstretched services and why? Probably so the council can reap all that ban G council tax to spend anywhere but Hale Barnes and Timpley. We reject this plan as we always have. Thank you very much. Thank you, councillor. Is there a speaker on behalf of the Green Party, please? There is, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, we have consistently voted against this plan, and it will surprise no one to hear that we are voting against it tonight. Uh, we do, however, want to take a moment to thank those officers and indeed councillors, both here uh, and across GM, who have worked on this over the years uh, through many challenges, and particularly those who have very patiently answered our, our many, many queries. Uh, we accept, uh, as Councillor Patel said, the principle of working together as a group of nine or ten councils was the best way to go about trying to preserve and protect as much of our green space as possible. And we also accept that there are, as Councillor Ross has said, many positive elements in this plan, uh, but we do feel that they don't go far enough. Living in a climate emergency, we cannot vote for a plan that simply accepts the doubling of airport use or that intends to build a new road across Carrington Moss. And we disagree with the fundamental aims of this Labour-led plan. The focus is not solely on prioritising the homes we need and protecting our environment. It is also, and destructively, on the prioritisation of economic growth. And this comes at the expense of our green belt, both in Timperley Wedge and in Carrington Moss, as well as our clean air, our biodiversity and the stability of our climate. As Greens, we do want to see growth in some industries, in the new green industries of the future. And crucially, we want to see a just transition for those involved in, and employed by the polluting industries of the past. But pursuing, pursuing growth for growth's sake has led us to the broken planet that we live on. We can't have infinite consumption on a finite planet. And while growth is used by the old parties as a proxy for well-being, it is a very poor proxy. And this plan illustrates how the hunger for growth can come at the cost of the well-being of our residents, our nature and our environment. Now it needs to be noted that whilst this is a primarily Labour-led plan, it was started here in Trafford by the previous Conservative administration who supported building on even more of our green belt when they were running the council. And I think it's also really important to acknowledge that it is framed very much by the Conservative government's planning policies. And as Greens, we don't buy into the Conservatives' agenda designed for the benefit of property developers who carve up our green belt for massive profits. Despite our housing crisis, we know that these developers, with the endorsement of our Conservative government, are building houses that most families can't afford to live in. And we know that 10% of donations received by the Conservative Party since 2010 have come from property developers, real estate tycoons, and others in the construction industry. So any suggestion that a Tory version of places for anyone, everyone would in any way address these issues is deeply misleading. So we will be voting against the motion tonight, and we would like to see the government abandon their cosy relationship with developers and focus on cosy, well-insulated homes for residents instead. Thank you. Thank you, councillor. The report has been moved and seconded. Can this be agreed, please? Madam Mayor, the Liberal Democrats would like to request a recorded vote. Councillor Patel, you have a minute to, to reply, please. Thank you. Sorry. I kind of wish we had a bit longer. I think it's an important debate. Um, uh, the Conservatives, you supported this plan in administration. You offered up more green belt, and um, now you speak in opposition to it. I've got, we've got a letter from Michael Gove to Andy Burnham encouraging the, the nine uh, authorities to pursue this plan-led approach. I think you've just totally given up on the, on the current young generation. You've got nothing to offer. The Lib, Lib Dems are very, always very flippantly dismiss places for everyone, which will provide hundreds of new affordable homes in Timpley. You have totally, totally misrepresented our affordable homes policy there. <laughs> Um, warm words for those in housing need, but you're never prepared to take the difficult decisions that needed in response. Um, uh, 
Uh, the Greens, I didn't expect any, any, anything else from you. Uh, I, I know that you get it on a strategic and a spatial sense of it. I've seen recently um, Councillor Welton uh, claim that Trafford has enough bedrooms um, to solve the housing crisis. I think that Thank just you, shows Councillor. how divorced you are from any reality and meaningful solution to the housing crisis. Thank you, Councillor. Planning is always a balance between environmental, social and economic factors. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. The report has been moved and seconded. Madam Mayor, the Liberal Democrats are requesting a recorded vote. Um, the, um, the request for a recorded vote supported by, is it supported by two members present? The request for a recorded vote is accepted and I will now put this to the vote. Can I have a show of hands please and keep your hands raised while a record is taken, please. Thank you. All those in favour? <laughs> All those against? Is there any abstentions? Thank you. The report is approved. The report is approved. Item six. Item six is Trafford Council's pay policy statement for 2024-2025. And as with previous items, I have set out with the group leaders that each party will be allowed one speaker but this time I have, we'll have to have one minute each. The proposed report will have two minutes to introduce the report and will be given 30 seconds at the end to sum up. The seconder will be given one minute. I invite the Deputy Leader of the Council and the Executive Member for Leisure, Arts and Culture and Heritage to introduce the report and you have two minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the pay policy statement principally sets out the Council's approach to Chief Officer Pay in accordance with the requirements of Section 38 of the Localism Act 2011. Um, it is an annual report to be considered for approval at Council. Um, employment Committee, whose role it is to oversee the pay policy statement, has recommended approval at their meeting on the 11th of March. Um, subject to approval from the Council, the report will be published on the Council's external website, as we do each year. Um, I won't go through the whole report, obviously in the interest of time, but do draw attention to some key points in this year's statement. Um, in 23-24, um, we had one interim appointment at Chief Officer level. Um, this was a role in adults and wellbeing to support with developing a, um, a vision and target operating model um, and some government uh, governance arrangements for a range of projects that will support our residents. Um, the council pays the real living wage, um, and as you'll be aware, we achieved accreditation last year, which was a really positive move for the council. Um, the new real living wage um, rate is £12 per hour, um, and a supplement of 17 pence will be paid to all council and maintained school employees on our lowest spinal column um, from the 1st of April. Um, this will be paid until um, the 24-25 pay award is implemented, which will then take um, us to the higher rate. Um, the council monitor pay ratios to understand the salaries of our highest earners compared to those in the middle and those at the bottom of our pay scale, and the ratios are set out in the report. Um, each year we produce and submit our gender pay gap by the end of March, um, and Trafford Council figures for reporting in 24 um, are a mean gender pay gap of 9.7%. Thank um, you, Councillor. That's my time. Thank you. Thank you. Is that seconded, please? You have one minute. Seconded, Mayor.
Is there a speaker on behalf of the Conservative group, please? You've got one minute. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, it always gives me a shock. Every year, this report, eye-watering. I'm clearly in the wrong job. Um, we support it, it is what it is, and we support this report. Thank you. Thank you. Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Liberal Democrats, please. Yes, Mayor. Uh, briefly, I would like to take the opportunity to welcome and acknowledge the progress that Trafford is making towards real living wage um, for staff. And it, although it is concerning to note that although the general direction of travel on the gender pay gap since 2018 is a positive one, in the last few years, the direction of travel has reversed slightly. I know that officers and, uh, all, and members of the Employment Committee are looking very closely at the causes behind that trend. As I say, of course, from 2018, the direction is positive, but we note that with concern that that slight move in the wrong direction as well. And I understand as well that pay brackets for very senior officers can look very high from the outside looking in, but I think it's important to know that in local government, you need to attract and retain quality if you want that strategic overview of, of the services that our residents rely on. So with that, the Liberal Democrats support the statement. Thank you, Councillor. Is there a speaker on behalf of the Green Party, please? Thanks, Mayor. Um, we welcome the Council's pay settlement in what are difficult times financially. We know that the Council has exceptional staff that often go beyond and above. As councillors, we often were provided with excellent reports, updates, and help in holding this council to account from the people that run it. Therefore, we're pleased to see a commitment to a very good pay ratio between the highest and lowest paid person. The Green Party policy would legislate for a 10 to 1 pay ratio between the highest and lowest um, across all companies. So it's good to see that Trafford are doing better with a pay ratio of 9 to 1 in 23-24, and now 8.58 to 1 in 24-25. So there's progress, so well done. The Green Party also backs the introduction of the £15 per, for a minimum wage. It's good to see the Council are committed to the, the real living wage as a minimum, and this moves to £12, so that's very good to see. There are, of course, other ways to reward staff, such as incentivising active travel and lifestyles. Though the Council can be considered to be performing well on the gender pay cap, this is still nearly 10%. I mean, as a society, a Council political parties. We need to break down the view Thank that you, some Councillor. of our lowest paid jobs are only for women. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Hines, you have 30 seconds to sum up, please. Um, many thanks, um, and thank you for um, your support across the Chamber. Um, I echo those um, comments, really, around um, the pay ratio and also the gender pay gap, and there is a lot of work going on around that. So thank you very much for everybody's support. Thank you, Councillor. The report is, uh, is for information. Can it be noted, please? Thank you. Item seven's motions. This evening we have eight motions that have been listed as summonses in order of that they were received. You have been provided with the timing allocated for each motion in advance. Proceeding then with the first motion concerning focus on Trafford, Councillor Eckersley. I uh, want you have one minute to move the motion, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> so I, I was elected in May 2023 for Bowdoin Ward. And the reason why I came into local politics was due to a genuine desire to make a positive contribution to my local area, which is the Bowdoin Ward and Trafford Borough as a whole. It's over the past year that I've discovered how much time is wasted in these council chambers discussing international politics that bear no fruit for local ratepayers and only fuel am ambitions and egos. We are local councillors, elected to represent the needs of local residents in our wards and the local people of Trafford on local issues. We are not international political commentators, and we do ourselves a disservice in making grandiose statements, believing them to be somehow poignant and significant enough to make a difference on the world stage. The council has spent many hours discussing the war in Ukraine and has concerned itself with the Israel-Palestine conflict. But where does this end? Do we need to talk about the persecution of Christian Armenians and the aggressive land grab actions of Azerbaijan, backed by Turkey? Iran's merciless crackdown on anti-regime protests? Should we discuss the civil war in Myanmar or Somalia, or the Afghanistan-Pakistan border conflict? Haiti, the numerous wars going on, on, on in Africa? Thank Your answer you, is no. Is that seconded, please? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, I agree with what Councillor Eckersley says. At the end of the day, we are here to represent one thing and one thing only, and that is Trafford residents. 
We are local councillors on Traffic Council and we've been elected by those residents. We are not here to talk about international politics, international policies or international affairs. The simple fact is we're here to deal with potholes, repairing the roads, getting the bins sorted out, getting our children into local schools. I know certain people here want to be members of Parliament and see this council chamber as their way to practice their public speaking. But the simple fact is we are here to focus on Trafford. I know some people might disagree and you have differences in opinions on international affairs, but that doesn't matter. We are here to sort out Trafford and Trafford alone. Thank you, Councillor. I have received notice of an amendment to this motion. Councillor Harding, you have one minute to move the amendment, please. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, whether you like it or not, local politics and national politics are inextricably linked. We only have to look at things like a global pandemic, when the council had to come together to talk about things that impacted us on the national stage. You made a lot of reference to international politics, but we do have to work on a national level sometimes. You've mentioned vaping in the motion, and you've mentioned um, leasehold. You might feel that those are to be dismissed, but I beg to differ when residents who contact me about things that impact their day-to-day -day lives. So are you seriously saying that some of the things we debate don't impact on our residents? They absolutely do. And Trafford residents expect us to amplify their voices for them. We are elected to represent residents, and that is what we shall do. So I don't want to close down debate in this chamber, but what I do want to do is convene a meeting of the Constitutional Working Group, and we will go through the correct procedures. And those procedures are the Constitutional Working Group, then standards, and then scrutiny. Those are the processes that are followed around the governance of this council. We are not to close debate down in this council chamber. I hope you will support this amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Is that seconded, please? Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I'm supporting this amendment because I believe that as elected representatives, we carry a profound responsibility to advocate for the well-being and interest of the residents of our borough. I believe that by convening a meeting of the Constitution Working Group, we'll be able to review our Council's constitution, particularly concerning the format of our Council meeting. Our objective should be to scrutinize the scope of admissible motions, ensuring that our procedures align with the principle of transparency, fairness, and efficiency. A cross-party working group will be able to encompass diverse perspectives and insights from across the political spectrum. By fostering collaboration and dialogue, we can ensure that our review process is comprehensive and inclusive and reflect the interests and concerns of all our stakeholders within our community. Our mandate is clear. We are elected to represent the residents within the borough on matters which this council has control over. Let's, let us recommit ourselves to the noble task entrusted to us by our residents. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. The amendment has been moved and seconded. I will now invite one minute speeches in respect of the amendment only. Is there a speaker on behalf of the Conservative Party, please? You've got one minute. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <coughs> Members in the committee chamber here will know that I'm a simple lad. Most of these international things are way above my pay grade. But I do live by one particular prayer. God, grant me the, sen the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. The sad conclusion that I've reached is at this point in the debate, and I use that word in the loosest possible way, I've become irrelevant as a result of the brutal filleting presented as an amendment which simply destroys the well-intentioned and constructive intention of the original motion. I can, even in my simplicity, see the attraction of the amendment, especially to those members who hold ambitions beyond this chamber, but really, Thank you, Thank you Councillor. Is there a speaker on behalf of the Liberal Democrats, please? Yes, Mayor, thank you. Um, I'm going to be speaking to the amendment. Um, we support the, the nature of that amendment, but we just have concerns, so we will be voting against it. Uh, but at the same time, we will take our seat on that steering group and we will make sure we scrutinise through. Um, Hey, we've seen what Labour does when they control councils elsewhere in Greater Manchester. They have limited debate, limited motions, limited discussion time by opposition. 
Um, and you know, I'll say later, I'm still I'm perplexed with the Conservatives bringing this motion to shut down and limit debate and discussion. You've walked into a trap of your own making there. So congratulations. And I'll speak later as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Is there a speaker on behalf of the Green Party, please? Yeah, thank you. Um, so we are happy to support a review of the Constitution. Um, and just to go back to, as it's been mentioned obviously about vaping, um, I think a lot of us know that when the government finally took action on that, a lot of the press coverage did acknowledge that it was the work of councillors up and down the country who'd brought that higher up the agenda. The LJ themselves recognised that it was the work of councillors who had contributed to that. Um, and I do say I, I'm a bit baffled really at some of the things that the Conservatives have mentioned. Um, I think it was your party that brought the motion about Russia and Ukraine. Um, so <laughs> I'm just not sure, you know, fair enough, you've changed your mind, but is that linked to the intense scrutiny that you're finding yourselves under from the party that you choose to be in? Um, so yeah, we're happy to support a review of the constitution, but it's really insulting, I think, to the residents who've elected all of us into these positions to try and reduce the platform that we have to be able to represent them. So yeah, I think it's just a case of recognising that that is a privilege and one that we should take seriously and recognise how much work that we as councillors can do. Thank you, councillor. Councillor Eckersley, if you wish to reply, you've got one minute, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I appreciate the comments that have been made, particularly from councillor uh, Baba. Thank you very much. I agree with what he was saying about the steering committee. Um, we all understand that there are many international issues that affect our communities in Trafford. Uh, however, there are a multitude of ways in which people affected by international crises can make their concerns and grievances known, such as contacting their local MP and government departments. Uh, this is not the forum for such concerns and grievances to be discussed and dwelled upon. We don't want to shut down debate. We just want to focus the debate on local issues. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I will now put the amendment to the vote. And can I have a show of hands, please, and keep your hands raised while a record has been taken. All those in favour? All those against? Any abstentions? Thank you. Sorry. The amendment is carried. Thank you. We will now have a debate on the original motion or motions of the amendment. Is there a speaker on behalf of the Labour Group, please? And you've got one minute. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I'm happy to speak in favour of the uh, substantive uh, motion as it's become. I think it's quite right that this goes to the Constitutional Working Group. That's the most appropriate way to discuss these matters and not have them in rushed form, to, form at Council. And just to echo what was said before, the situation in Russia and Ukraine was incredibly horrendous at the time and people needed that reassurance so it was the case that the conservative group brought a motion to council in march 2023 about that so we wouldn't want to look at um, the way that this could curtail stuff so let's do it in a sensible way let's do it in a cross-party way let's take it to the constitutional working group and come back later in or in, in the new municipal year with some uh, some new rules so thank you Matt. thank you leader is there a speaker on behalf of the liberal democrats please yes uh, thank you. Um, just to quote the uh, local Conservatives following November's full council meeting, why would you limit democracy? That was their cry after we had to streamline the questions um, system in November, just as we have done this evening. Um, simply put, this motion, which we won't be voting for as well, sim is designed to stop this chamber from criticising the current Conservative government and their inaction on issues that affect our residents at local level. Would we have been allowed to speak about flooding prevention? It is, after all, the Environment Agency, national. Would we have been, uh, been able to discuss damp and mould in social homes, seeing as councils don't own social homes anymore? It's all housing associations, and they're regulated by national government. Would we have discussed voter ID and the monitoring implications for future elections? Again, Conservative motion probably would have limited this. 
putting these decisions in the hands of officers. That's why we're against this. We do need better safeguards in place. We do need a uh, better structure to our meetings. We're happy to work with you, but we'll be voting against this. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a speaker on behalf of the Green Party, please? Thank you. Um, so I really would just like to say that I can only imagine what a privilege it must be to choose to exist in a bubble, quite frankly, whereby you are unaffected by the national picture. If we look just at the last couple of weeks alone at the picture that's happened nationally, we've seen a millionaire conservative donor who's been awarded hundreds of millions of pounds in government contracts normalise violence against people elected into positions like ours. That every woman, every black woman, everyone who suffers from these threats and the society that normalises it cannot simply choose to ignore these and focus on local issues. And if I'm given a platform to condemn something, then I will. And if you don't like it, then you could always ask your own party to change their behaviour rather than ask the rest of us to stop calling it out. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Eccleston, you have a right to reply and you've got one minute, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I think it's quite outrageous what Councillor Spencer ju just said then. This, mo this motion that was put forward was not about national politics, it's about international politics. I want to thank leader, uh, the leader here today. I support your proposals that you just mentioned there, actually, uh, and I appreciate your understanding on this matter. Uh, I'm, I myself was not a councillor in March 2023, so forgive me. Uh, I'm only referencing my own experiences since May. Um, all I want to say is uh, we will be supporting um, the current motion as it stands. Uh, we want things to improve. We want to focus and keep things uh, local. So thank you very much. Thank you. I will now put a substantive motion as amended to the vote. And can, we, can you raise your hands, please, and keep your hands raised while a record is taken. All those in favour? Thank you. All those against? Any abstentions? The motion is carried. Thank you. Motion 7B. The next motion this evening is getting the basic right, road maintenance. Councillor Pori, you have one minute to move the motion, please. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this motion does what it says on the tin. We just want to streamline how we deal with the follow-up of pothole repair. My ward in particular, Ridgeway Road, it is a, has been the bane of my life for the past year. And it's been the bane of... Councillor Ennis's life for the past two years and it's been the bane of Councillor Newgrosh's life since 2019. This road sits on the very edge of our of our ward it's constantly breaking down constantly have uh, potholes on it we report it they get filled two three weeks later those same repairs have broken down we know this road needs a longer term approach. It needs that block approach that we've seen uh, the Lib Dems achieve on roads like Grove Lane and Thorley Lane and Clay Lane. But and I'm in the meantime on that, we need to be able to fill these potholes properly and seal them properly. And that's Thank you, what Councillor. this motion is for. Thank you. Can the motion be seconded, please? Seconded, Mayor, reserve the right to speak. Thank you. I've received a notice of amendment to this motion. Councillor Evans, you have one minute to, amend, to move the, the amendment, please. Before I start, Madam Mayor, uh, may I just uh, take the opportunity to echo Councillor Ross's uh, thoughts earlier in the meeting. Um, tribute to Councillor Wetton and Councillor Walsh. Councillor Walsh, planning will never, be, it will never recover from the loss of you. Um, and Councillor Wetton, our group genuinely will be diminished. So thank you for both. Thank you to both of you. Um, and now, if you care to start the timer, um, on to the motion or the amendment. The overarching issue uh, here is the Dickensian methods we use here in Trafford to repair our potholed roads. Recognised nationally as being in the top ten 
and GM wide were the first, not an achievement I would imagine we should be proud of. It's clear the current methods of repair are not suitable for Trafford, resulting in multiple return visits and some repairs lasting only a few weeks. I highlighted one myself this week in my ward that after finally getting repaired after four weeks ago, it has already started to break down. Our partner Amy utilises modern methods in other councils. Uh, you may not wish to embrace uh, our proposal of a JCB pothole pro, which we know Amy use elsewhere. But there are other brands that might be political, uh, politically acceptable. Trafford needs to move on from the bucket and spade approach to road maintenance, adopting cost-effective methods that will save money, time and resources. Members, you all need to get behind this amendment and then the motion and deliver what Thank our you, residents Councillor. are demanding. Thank, Thank you, you, Madam Mayor. Is that seconded, please? Thank you. Yes, Madam Mayor, I would like to second that. Much of our amendment reiterates the points that we made during the budget presentations of a few weeks ago. The intent of our suggestions then remains the same. We are fully aware of the straightened circumstances in which the Council finds itself, but surely this does not preclude a brief respite of the sackcloth and ashes mindset demonstrated over recent weeks so that we can emerge into an era of hope and achievement with modern, proven techniques. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. The amendment has been moved and seconded. I now invite one minute speeches in respect of the amendment only. Is there a speaker, please, on behalf of the Labour Party? Thank you, uh, Mayor. Uh, just in terms of the, uh, the motion itself is generally flawed in that sense, and I'll explain briefly why that is when I get to the Lib Dem motion, but predominantly a lot of things that are already happening in it I've actually, well, a lot of things asking for are actually already in place now. So, so, uh, so in that sense of it, the, the amendments to it itself don't really change the motion in that sense of it. So we, we can't really support the amendment as we're not going to support the motion in that sense of it. So I'll outline a bit more why I come to it, but obviously uh, Councillor Evans at the uh, budget set meeting, your proposal to actually buy these expensive machines uh, was simply not viable and it would have actually ended up making the situation there roads far worse than what they are now in that sense of it, and it would actually take money from proactive work into reactive work there in, in that sense of it. So I mean, we uh, simply can't support these m before us tonight and obviously I'll give you a bit more information why when we get onto the main motion, so thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Is there a speaker on behalf of the Liberal Democrats, please? Thank you, Mayor. This amendment seems to want systematic, uh, want systematic inspections, which I don't think will be as effective as random inspections, because then Amy will get to know which pieces of work are being inspected. Um, I'm, I'm hoping you mean ward by ward and we just have some form of system like that. We need to keep the element of surprise. It's like, like to me telling my child that I'll check his homework every Thursday. I'm absolutely certain the quality of homework on a Thursday will improve, but I'm also certain that the other days it won't. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Is there a speaker, please, on behalf of the Green Party? Thank you, Mayor. Um, Councillor Taylor must be thrilled because we have a motion about potholes. Hooray. Uh, this amendment is uncosted, unfortunately, and uh, tries to spend money um, we don't have yet or even know how much we'll get um, in contradiction to the Trafford's Highways Infrastructure Asset Man Management Plan. I suggest you read it. It calls for a large, though unspecified, investment in technology for reactive, as Councillor Adshead has said, pothole maintenance, which would use up resources that would otherwise be spent on the Council's preferred proactive maintenance programme. But then the amendment contradicts itself by advocating a large, though unspecified, investment in a proactive maintenance programme. So it's uncosted and it's confused, so we won't be supporting it. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Pori, you have one minute if you wish to reply. I completely understand where you're coming from, Councillor Welton, and just uh, thank you for this discussion about it. I think. A lot of our residents are just exasperated, but we know where the real problem lies. It's the fact that we don't have enough money coming down from national government and promised uh, billions that were supposed to be flooding in over the past few years um, haven't 
been received, haven't materialised, but we need to get the potholes right. It's that visual thing that everyone sees, regardless of what services they use and don't use. Um, I, I welcome the amendment with um, a few caveats, but um, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. I will now put the amendment to the vote, and can I have a show of hands, please, and keep your hands raised while the record has been taken. All those in favour? All those against? Is there any abstentions? Oops. <laughs> it was left up, sorry. The amendment <laughs> is lost. We'll now have a debate on the original motion, please. And there'll be speakers on behalf of the Labour Party. You've got one minute. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mayor. Uh, the motion itself is uh, simply uh, inaccurate. What I, would, what I do find interesting with all these three motions particularly is that the Lib Dems seem to have uh, nicked their strap line, getting basics right. That was uh, one of their strap lines there. So uh, thank you uh, for uh, using their strap line because it's something that we do see as a priority. In terms of it though, is that all the uh, in the council resolves too is actually happens the case now. So, so there are inspections following all works, not all straight away. And so it's difficult to actually uh, get everyone immediately afterwards, but uh, during the course of a year, uh, as the work progresses, all of them are inspected, and indeed, if there are any complaints from residents, they are followed up immediately, always that is the case. You, you also suggest that, predominantly, uh, that when a pothole itself is made, when a pothole is filled, it's, n it's not sealed in and so forth. Permanent potholes are filled in. What isn't filled in, uh, that may not be uh, sealed in, is where those works are temporary or urgent, in that sense of it. So, so you can, that, that is the case. What I'd also Thank say you, Councillor. Thank you. Councillor. Is there a speaker on behalf of the Conservative Party, please? God. I want to get into the best of it. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, we all know you're failing. We should fix it once, fix it properly, and move on. And if we can get this right, we can move on, and we'll speak about them in a moment, we can sort the drains out, perhaps. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a speaker from the Green Party, please? Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, while the Green Group supports the sentiment of this motion, getting the basics right needs to stretch to the way that motions are put together in the first place. This motion has budgetary implications, um, so we would have expected some outline costings and perhaps a value comparison with what the Council does now, and at least an idea of how any extra expense would be afforded. Um, and I, I know that the Labour, uh, Labour, the Conservatives and the Green Group have actually been in contact with the relevant council officers to consult about these motions, um, but apparently the Liberal Democrats were not in contact with the, the officers in the writing of them. Therefore, the motion lacks informa information about what the quality control regime looks like in comparison with the auditing that is already done. Or, um, and how inspections of roads and footways um, would differ from those already happening. So if more re resources are to be used for better inspections, this motion has no costing of it. Um, this, really, uh, this is a, really a question to officers about, uh, it should be a question about the use of bitumen tape, but it's masquerading as a motion. And while it's been enlightening to find out a bit more about the subject, we can't support it as the text stands. Thank you. Councillor Ennis, you reserve the right to come back, please, if yeah, you want to you. speak. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. We have nicked uh, Labour's getting the basics right strap line because, as has been evidenced tonight, you're not prepared to vote for your own strap line. So we will take on that mantra uh, with pleasure. Um, if we've heard from the executive tonight that if spot checks for potholes are already taking place, I think that's actually a really damning indictment of this Labour administration. Are you really suggesting that you have been out, you've checked? Amy's work and you are happy with the quality of it. The only answer to that can be no, so support the motion. Thank you. Councillor Poore, you have a right to reply. You've got one minute. I move to the vote, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. I will now put the motion to the vote. And can I have a show of hands, please? And please keep your hands raised while the record is taken. All those in favour? All those against?
Any abstentions? The motion is lost. Thank you. Motion 7C. The next motion this evening is about getting the basics right in drainage. Councillor Menace, you have one minute to move the motion, please. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. The, the block grids are a cause, um, one of the causes for the state of our roads. On a walk home from Timpley tram stop one day, I was just behind a mother and child. The mong mother stopped her child. The car passed us and we all managed to avoid being soaked. The mother hurried her child past the puddle, which covered half of the footpath before the next car came. I waited until there were no oncom oncoming cars and noted the location of the grid. Between Timpley tram stop and Linsgate Drive, I found seven blocked grids. My eldest also informed me of some blood blocked grids that he's seen on his travels. The following morning on the school run, I noted further grids that were blocked. I reported the 12 grids with the exact locations to Amy. A month later, they had not been cleared. The leaves fall off the trees every year. It's nothing new. The leaves start, off, start to fall off in autumn, and before they are swept, they've rotted and fallen down the drains. Increasing the amount of unblocking is clearly necessary when you see blocked grids still blocked Thank you, after, Councillor. Month after being Thank reported you. a month ago. Thank you. Is that seconded, please? Seconded, Mayor. Reserve the right to speak. Thank you. I have now received a notice of amendment to this motion. Councillor Evans, you have one minute to move the amendment, please. Madam Mayor, I've made it 20 years in this chamber when I'm talking about drains. Congratulations. <laughs> 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 I'll bring my own rods next time. <laughs> the amendment, Madam Mayor, has published simply suggests some of the minor changes to reflect a sensible and pragmatic approach to the ongoing drainage issues in the borough. I hope that you will all find it possible to support this amendment in whatever form it finally makes it to a vote. Thank you. Thank you. Is that seconded, please? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, the original motion was a little restrained. These are the absolute basics of what this council and elected members are responsible for. And if this administration cannot get the absolute basics right, the basics that are visible to everyone just by looking out of their front door, what is happening to the services our residents cannot see? Hale Road from Park Road to the Four Seasons Roundabout, 80% of the drains are blocked and they've been blocked for two years. Same road outside, outside St Ambrose is like a swamp for two years. Total neglect of the south. The A56 today into Manchester between Altrincham and Sale, pretty much every drain was blocked and it pretty much just drizzled last night. Um, we all know these stories, no point we can go on, but we all can go on. It's just beyond a joke. We need a simple solution and actually our amendment strengthens the Liberal Democrats motion, which hopefully might start to address it. Thank you. Thank you. The amendment has been moved and seconded and now invite one minute speeches in respect of the amendment only. Is there a speaker please on behalf of the Labour Party and you've got one minute. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Steve, the Councillor Hazard will go into the detail of this, but I have to say I am finding these motions pretty tedious. Do you know what? You all voted against the Labour budget last month, and you didn't come up with any solutions or answers to any of this. You just told us council tax was going up, we were using too much reserves, you didn't like some of our spending commitments. And now you come back a month later with various plans that haven't been properly costed, expecting us to accept them. Do your homework next time and come back with some proper plans. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you. Is there a speaker on behalf of the Liberal Democrats, please? Apologies. I didn't think I was speaking on this. <laughs> um, look, drain, drains are a problem. I think my uh, Councillor colleague has already discussed our problems across Timpley in particular. I know there's problems across the borough with drains. A lot of it's to do with 
the actual sewage drain, um, sewage actually breaking down because we've got Victorian pipes. They all need replacing. Uh, Stockport Road is notorious uh, for block drains because of the sewage piping that has been in there 120 years in one shape or another. And when they go to clean it out and flush it out, all the orange clay is coming out with it because it is all breaking down. If we can't get our drains unblocked, then our drains are just going to—they're going to be collapsing everywhere, and it's just going to be a longer-term problem. Again, I know this is linked to the national government and to privatised water companies not actually fulfilling what they need to do. Um, so, that's it. thank you. Thank you. Is there a speaker on behalf of the Green Party, please? Thank you, I'll, uh, Mayor. I'll come on to uh, the, the wider problem with the drains in, a, in, in the substantive motion, but uh, uh, I'll get a little nerdy because this uh, amendment is actually factually incorrect uh, in suggesting that there isn't a proactive program of drains maintenance. According to officers, one of the two machines in use is on a schedule of proactive drains inspection and clearance. The other one is dedicated to reactive maintenance, i.e. unblocking the drains that are reported Block by many, blocked by many of us councillors and other citizens as well. The problem, therefore, is, in fact, one of capacity. Two machines are not enough. Therefore, the removal of the word capacity from this motion is actually unhelpful, so we'll not be supporting the amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Holden, you have a, uh, one minute to reply, if you wish. I won't keep you very long. In my earlier contribution, I said, can we dump the sackcloth and ashes and just do something creative? And that's all I'll ask. Let's have a go. Let's try. Let's see if we can actually rescue something from the morass that we find ourselves in now. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I will now put the amendment to the vote. And can I have a show of hands, please, and keep your hands raised while a record has been taken. All those in favour? All those against? Thank you. Any abstentions? Thank you. The amendment is lost. We will now have a debate on the original motion, please. Is there a speaker on behalf of the Labour Party? And you've got one minute. Thank you, uh, Mayor. Just in terms of this again. Again, uh, there is a number of inaccuracies within that. Uh, also, uh, it it's, uh, asks, actually asks about budgetary implications on there. As Councillor Welton pointed out, obviously there already is in place a reactive uh, system in place as well as a planned uh, statistical maintenance program in, as well. N now, uh, during leaf clearance time, there is actually vehicles that go around and know where all the hotspots are. But however, the suggestion in point two, that as it says there, that, that there is no uh, use of the vehicle at weekends and so forth on the sat idling, this is simply incorrect. The vehicles, uh, if not directly used, are actually on standby for dealing with floods and so forth. Many of the teams may work Monday to Friday, but there are teams that are in at weekends and, and, and to suggest that we simply uh, employ more staff to us uh, from other departments, bring them in to use it. Well, that has implications then for other services that you have to do. Now, uh, if you want then bring in extra staff, where's the money going to come from that as well? We have to work with resources. I would love more resources, but obviously give me more. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you. <laughs> Is there a speaker on behalf of the Conservative Party, please? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, it's just a suggestion, really. Um, if we have uh, provisions for second time le leaf clearance in front of schools or in arterial roads or parks, the service users would be really, really uh, very happy, especially parents and kids when they are on the school run. That's uh, sort of, they are trying to avoid uh, you walking to the school because they are afraid they'll be splashed by moving cars because of the blocked grids and drains. Similarly, so service users of parks, they can't really walk down because there is puddles everywhere. Not only blocked drains, 
there is also um, um, uh, various construction um, going on in various um, areas. So if this could be done proactively, that would really help uh, the residents. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Ennis, uh, if you wish to come back, please. Thank you, Mayor. Um, get, Councillor Ross, getting the basics right is tedious. Are you really going to stand by that? And you did say that. And what's remarkable about the fact that you said that is it's your promise to get the basics right in your first ever speech as leader of this council. I think, actually, the tone of the Tory amendments tonight has been very instructive. Despite the fact that the Tories signed the AME contract, they now clearly accept that the deal needs to be improved for Trafford residents. I don't understand what the Labour group is scared of, what's controversial about this family of motions this evening. They seem to be very happy with the AME contract as it is. I can assure you that residents are not, and I think that all councillors should get behind every effort to get the basics right, mm -hmm. Councillor Ross. Sorry, can I ask um, if there's a speaker from the Green Party, please? I do apologise. Thank you, Mayor. Again, I believe there's been no approach to officers to discuss this motion beforehand. And uh, if the Lib Dems had done that, they would have found out that Trafford used to have six or more of these machines prior to the Amy contract. Imagine that luxury. While well, we support getting the most out of these existing machines, two, ex two days extra work from each of them is not going to make a huge dent in that kind of backlog. I mean, what would help, according to officers, is a, th is a third permanent machine and a team to run it at a cost. Here's a figure, a figure at last, £250,000 a year. This would bring, um, build resilience into our operations that are overexposed to one of the current machines going wrong, and that is one of our big problems. What we would like to see is a deep dive into the longer-term savings that might be made if we spent more on keeping the drains clear. We know surface water speeds up the disintegration of roads and allows mud to collect, which weeds then grow in. So would spending more on our drains actually save us money on road repairs and weed spray? Sadly, this motion contains no such depth of analysis or costings, so we can't support it in this form. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Pori, you have a right to reply if you wish to. Okay, Councillor Menus. I'm happy to move to the vote. Thank you. Thank you. I will now put the motion to the vote, and can I have a show of hands, please, and keep your hands raised while there's a record taken, please. All those in favour? All those against? Thank you. Is there any abstentions? The motion is lost. Thank you. We're now moving to motion 7D. The next motion this evening is getting the basics right, footpaths and ginnels. Councillor Faz, I think you have two minutes to move this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Well, this is episode three of Getting the Basics Right in a series of motions from the Liberal Democrats inspired by the leader of Trafford Council, no less. When Councillor Ross took office last January, we were pleased to hear about this renewed focus on getting the basics right. And with a little help from the Liberal Democrats, it was hoped we could move in that direction. So, focus on these issues of weeds and ginnels. Picture, if you will, a footpath. Maybe it's between the road where you live and the main road. If it's full of weeds up to your knees while well, getting your trousers wet as you brush past may be a minor inconvenience. But imagine it's full of stinging nettles. That is at the height of a child's face when they are being pushed in a buggy or a pushchair. Think about that. Is that walking route for our accessible and our active travel plans actually open to everyone? We have a lot of active travel policies at Trafford Council, a lot of initiatives to get people walking and wheeling, and we spend a lot of public money on those schemes. I can't help but wonder if we could just clear some of the brambles at the end of the road, if we trim the nettles in our passageways and footpaths and alleyways, we'd encourage an awful lot of people to make a short journey on foot instead of by car. Trafford doesn't have a systematic proactive programme for weed clearing. The focus of the AMI contract is on the roads. Officers confirmed that to me at a committee, no less. I will remind the Green Party. I have asked them. And it's reactive at the moment, not proactive. So it does require that persistence of councillors to push for it. A proper plan to keep the public rights away clear, 
should be part of our basics for an active travel plan. I hope members opposite will agree with me. Thank you. Thank you. Is that motion seconded, please? Seconded, Mayor. Reserve the right to speak. Thank you, uh, Mayor. Sorry, on this one, I once again, we have an inaccurate <coughs> motion. Obviously, uh, none of these motions, I think Councillor Martin must point out, has been discussed with officers because if he had done so, you'd, they've actually been put correctly. You first of all suggest that we do not uh, spray off uh, things like some of the footpaths, public, foot, well, public footpaths and, and, and adopted back alleys. This is completely incorrect. They are weed sprayed as long as they are adopted and belong to the council. Now, if they're private land, then that's another matter at all. Now, in terms of, of other areas, that there is actually a planned, proactive programme of works during the course of the year. Uh, I know that uh, some areas that might not have proper footpaths and might be more in the way of, of actually uh, in more rural type things. There is a programme for that. And if you've actually raised that with officers, they'd have actually told you that. Now, we obviously don't want to extend the use of glyphosate in that sense of it and actually during the course of years we had a prior to actually we don't use it at all in green spaces and it's very likely the next year its use will cease completely so uh, we, we continue to look at alternatives in that sense of it but there is planned work on all these aspects of it there now you can shake your head and say there isn't but i can assure you that there is and if you discuss it Ross, they had to give you those details now that doesn't mean to say that things are, aren't are, met, are not missed that things can be missed but you need to get those reported and logged I myself have actually logged a few issues in one ward and I suggest that you do that. Now, none of these motions are actually accurate at all, so, so it's not a surprise that we're not supporting them, but I suggest that if you're going to come to us, come to the fact now, what I don't know whether it's simply grandstanding because of the elections in that sense of it. I think that's what it's more to do with that than it is actually trying to get basics right, because all these motions, they're all inaccurate. And if you'd actually asked for information, if you'd come to me or to my office, we'd actually told you some of the information there. Now, quite frankly, we want to do more in the way of it. And if you want to assist us with work in the future, we're quite happy to work with Council of all parties to try and improve all these environmental services. But simply grandstanding here on the last meeting before Council, simply doing things, saying incorrect information is not the way we want to do that. So please work with us and we'll happily work for you to try and find ways to improve all these things. There are areas that might be more rural, that I think need different forms of treatment and we can get them looked at and added to the programme. But what we cannot do is start doing wholesale, massive amounts of work on private land under that land adopted. So as long as the land is adopted, we can actually, there are serious problems on non-adopted land, then again, raise that with us and we can actually see about contacting landowners and so forth. So work with us on this, please do, and we'll happily see how we can rest with you. So, uh, Mayor, I'll leave that there. And obviously, uh, open plea to us, come and work with us. We're, we're there to actually. Thank you, Councillor. Is there a speaker on behalf of the Conservative Party? And you have three minutes, please. Yep, thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Crikey. It's like the Garrick Theatre by the members behind me tonight, isn't it? Um, look, we would like to support um, this motion submitted by Trafford Liberal Democrats. I'm also pleased to see a recent tweet out by Trafford Council um, Trafford Council's partnership with Amy is proving to be successful in a number of ways, including making a difference with our communities. So I'm finally pleased that the alignment with the Amy contract and the Council is beginning to be successful. Um, in a time of encouraging us all to get out and about and to encourage walking and cycling. The maintenance on our footpaths is essential. So yes, of course, we will be fully supporting um, this part of the motion. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have a speaker on behalf of the Green Party, please? Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mayor. It was really interesting to hear them talking about, um, the Liberal Democrats talking about s uh, strimming just now, because this very clearly looks to me like a, a motion about spraying. Um, and uh, you know, the they don't say how much extra glyphosate they'll need to spray, or how much it will cost, or how many miles of extra spraying will be required. And presumably, a lot of it will need to be done by hand, given the nature of these are gills. Um, so how much extra staff time will be required? Um, according to officers, a lot of the most trafficked alleys are already sprayed every year, but this isn't factored in because there's no costings, we're simply left to guess. 
Uh, unfortunately, I mean, I, uh, you probably should have consulted with um, Lib Dem Greens or something like that if you've got that kind of interest group about this motion before bringing it, because I really think that they would have had some concerns. And because um, you clearly don't care or, and are, ignor or are ignoring that spraying all ginnels and alleys as a matter of course will decimate plant and animal life that rely on these corridors as part of their habitat. It will also impact on neighbouring gardens you, and the children and pets that frequent the ginnels. So have I got three minutes or one? Sorry. <laughs> um, and I think a really important point, and I've, now I can take my time out of it, will, over it, will residents be consulted about whether, whether they want poison sprayed so close to their homes and gardens where it may never have been sprayed before? If so, how much will those consultations cost? And how much will it cost to manage the inevitable request for exemption. I mean, I'm sorry, but this motion is truly awful and we will proudly vote against it. Thank you. Yeah, Councillor Ennis, you have reserved the right if you wanted to come back. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. I have to say, I'm really surprised by the Labour's response to our motions this evening. Given that Councillor Ross used his very first speech as leader of this council to make a grandiose promise to finally sort out the Amy contract once and for all, it's very disappointing that given three opportunities, one after the other this evening, to make common sense improvements to our local services, time and again they have chosen to vote us down. I can only think that Councillor Ross's heart wasn't in it when he promised to get the basics right more than a year ago. And in fact, he's confirmed that himself this evening. The Amy contract is clearly, we all know, a very bad deal that the Conservatives now accept they never should have signed Trafford up to. But Labour's fingerprints are on this contract now as much as the Conservatives. And if we are not in a position to take aspects of the Amy contract back in-house, and we accept that that may well be the case given the local government finances, we must work to get a better deal out of Amy for our residents. That has been the approach the Liberal Democrats have taken. We will continue to take that approach. Sadly, Trafford Labour cannot say the same this evening. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor France, you have a right to reply, and you've got 30 seconds. 30 seconds, thank you. Look, Councillor Adstead seems to suggest we're already doing so much of this already, but why, pray tell, then so do so many residents ask me why the very fabric of our borough seems to be falling to bits around our ears? I've been questioned here about whether we've spoken to officers, so I refer you to the minutes of the scrutiny committee. I've done it in public the 16th of January this year. I get told off when I read out from paper, but it says here, Councillor Frass inquired what could be done about the lack of attention to footpaths and passageways with weeds, and it goes on to say, ask further about a programme to deal with this. The officer responded, there was currently no active programme, but Thank they you, would Councillor. take it away and look at doing it in the future. I have Thank you, Councillor. I will now put the motion to the vote, and can I have a show of hands, please, and keep your hands raised while a record is taken, please. All those in favour? All those against? Is there any abstentions? The motion is lost. Thank you. Motion 7E, as indicated earlier, motion 7E is to be withdrawn. Councillor Ross, is that correct? That is correct. Is that seconded, please? It is seconded. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. We will now turn to motion 7F. The next motion this evening will be on my vote, my vice charter. Councillor Ross, you have two minutes to move the motion, please. It's Councillor Proctor, Councillor Proctor, actually. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I will be very brief. As you all know, I'm disabled. I have been from birth. No one ever once tried to stop me from voting. Nobody. Since I became much more disabled in 2005, I've voted in every single election. Still, no one prevented me from voting. My disabilities are mainly physical, but with some cognitive impairment that makes it hard for me to um, get things right when I'm tired. What this motion does for 
My Vote, My Voice, it goes some way to make sh sure that all disabled people can vote, whether they have a learning disability, a physical disability, or a neuro or neurodivergent. And it does this by raising awareness of people's right to vote, making sure all our staff understand and promote this right, promoting the right to vote on our website, making polling stations accessible to all people. I'd like to thank the future councillor Sally Hurst for her fantastic Easy Read document that is now live on the council's website. The work she does is amazing on making complex information simple for everybody to understand. Please support this motion. Thank you. Is the motion seconded, please? Yes, I'm seconding. Um, it's an honour for me to second this motion. Our Labour groups championed disabled councillors for many years, and last year supported my daughter Sally, as Shirley's mentioned, um, who's autistic with learning disabilities, to stand as a councillor in Manor Ward. While she didn't win, she was warmly received on every doorstep, and she was a brilliant example of good conduct to us at the count. Sally, as Shirley mentioned, has produced an easy read version of tonight's motion, which is on the website, and I'll ask everyone to read. It's a really good example of how to make politics accessible to all, and she's with us in the chamber tonight. Um, people with learning disabilities and autism often struggle to take part in our electoral system. Manifestos, policies and motions are often confusing and inaccessible. How else would the Rwanda Bill have got through? But it's crucial that people with autism and learning disabilities use their vote. Currently, while most people with autism and learning disability want to work, only about 30% are in any sort of employment, meaning the vast majority are at the mercy of our heartless benefits system, our broken social housing and our decimated NHS. People Thank with you, learning Councillor. disabilities um, were six times more likely to die from COVID. I'd just like to say please support the motion, not Thank just you. by raising your hand, but by supporting your, your constituents to vote. Is there a speaker on behalf of the Conservative group, please? Yes, ma yes, Madam Mayor. Um, just some, some comments, uh, really, Madam Mayor. Uh, typically, 60% of voters do not vote in our local elections. So clearly, it is a much wider issue which encompasses, encompasses aut autistic adults and any with learning disabilities. The Council has mechanisms and the, the scope to improve awareness for all sectors of voters to communicate their voting rights and their means of accessing polling stations. And I think it must look into widening this. The spirit of this motion is right and laudable, but there are so many other aspects that need attention alongside those mentions. In conclusion, uh, Madam Mayor, can I change the subject and thank Councillor Ross and Councillor Evans for their kind words earlier. I'd perhaps have liked it to have been a more intellectual or academic speech that I was uh, concluding my council career on. But hey, it's been a blast. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Is there a speaker on behalf of the Lib Dems, please? Can I just confirm, is it one or two minutes? How, how long? Okay. You've got three minutes, yes, thank How you. Long? Sorry, I didn't hear that. You've got three minutes, thank oh, you. Right, okay, just useful to know. Okay, so as the motion states, with over one and a half million adults in the UK with a learning disability and over 70,000 autistic adults in the UK, this My Vote, My Voice Charter, it's vital because we do need to include all people in our democratic processes. I have an autistic son. He's now aged 30. He hasn't voted in recent elections because he feels he doesn't understand political processes. And he looks at mum and says, I don't want to be a local councillor like you, and I don't want to go to all those meetings, but he doesn't understand that all he has to do is put a cross in his chosen vote because that's his choice, because he doesn't want to vote, and that's fine <coughs> with me. But importantly, if he did decide to vote, he wouldn't be able to anyway because he doesn't have a driving license and his passport's expired because he doesn't like traveling abroad. So I think a lot of people 
with his condition and with learning disabilities would perhaps be in that position. They might want to vote, but if they turn up the polling station, they wouldn't have the right ID. And changes to the voter ID legislation, I'm certain, have significantly impacted on people with learning disability and autism, as well as other groups, but particularly that group. However, voting in elections, it's not the only way to support this group of people in democracy, because some will choose not to vote, but they definitely do have a right to be heard through increased advocacy and awareness of needs. So I think that's also important that when we do come across our residents with learning disabilities and with autism, that we don't just pass on to the next person or ask to speak to somebody else in the household, that we actually mm. listen to those people. And even if they don't make it to the ballot box for whatever reason, that we still hear their voice and we still hear about that and their needs as well. So it is important to note that 40% of the de democratic, the, the public, the general public, they don't even know these people have got a right to vote. So when you look at your wards and you're delivering your leaflets, have you included in your canvassing schedule all the supported living places? Have you, do you deliver leaflets to all those places? Because those people are entitled to vote and many of them are on the electoral register, but not all of them hear from us as uh, their elected representatives and their political parties. And I wholeheartedly agree with the other points made in this motion as well. 80% of people feel that polling stations are inaccessible for disabled people. I, you only have to look around and <coughs> that it's not easy and tricky for people to um, access their legal entitlements to vote. So I wholeheartedly support this motion. Thank you for bringing thank you, it Councilor. and thank you to the person who wrote the simplistic form of it. That's excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Could we have a speaker from the Green Party, please? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, yeah, disability often results in, those, uh, results in those with impairments meeting attitudes and barriers in society that hinder their full and effective participation on an equal basis with others. Now, I'd, I'd like to speak from a personal experience because I have a sister with learning disabilities and she never ceases to amaze me. Uh, she's got a degree of insight and a straight way of seeing things that we really can learn from. And however, but she needs time and support to give her that voice so that that voice is actually heard. And our society can really benefit from listening to people who look at things differently. I've also had the privilege of speaking to Sally tonight and who Sally wrote the easy read version of this motion and showed me a fantastic website that supports people to understand aspects of politics in easy read. I think it's actually something we could all benefit from when you actually look at it, but it's something that really starts to ensure that, all, that people are included. So that's why the Green Policy part of policy states that those with disabilities should have a right to services and to support, that, to support that enables them to participate as full members of our democratic society, particularly in, including in, elect, in elected office. The Green Party is also committed to ensuring that all new policies should be considered from the perspective of whether they promote equality. And though recently one of the, one of the uh, polling stations in my ward recommended that it was changed because it wasn't accessible because there's a step into it and I actually saw somebody in a wheelchair not be able to vote because they couldn't get in in, in the previous years. So for this year, for this reason, we fully support the motion and the signing of the My Vote, My Voice Charter, which is incredibly important. Everybody in our society deserves to have their voices heard. It enhances our democracy and means that, that our p politicians will, be able to, will better be able to reflect the people they serve and that the outcomes and the policies produced will also be better. Thank you. Thank you so much. Councillor Proctor, you have 30 seconds if you wish to sum up. Sorry, I didn't realise I'd have more time. Um, brilliant, everyone. Thank you very much. That's my sum up. I will now put the motion to the vote. And can I have a show of hands, please, and keep your hands raised while the record has been taken. All those in favour? <laughs> All those against? Any, <laughs> any abstentions? <laughs> The motion is carried. The motion is carried. Motion 7G, the next motion this evening is on the Israeli and Gaza motion.
Councillor Coggins. Po point of order, Madam Mayor. Um, no good will come of this. Actually, two points of order. So point one doesn't stand. I'll move on to point two. Point 11.3, scope of motions, must be about matters for which the council has responsibility or which affect the borough. This motion is so out of scope, I can't even begin to describe it. So, there you go. Councillor Evans, thank you for identifying which um, rule you feel is breached. Can you tell us why you think, can you tell us why you think it is breached? Because we have no control it won't affect anything, anywhere, and, it's a, and, and a broadly, might be the odd resident that wants it, our residents do not want this, and we are wasting our time, our residents' time. We've had a what is this costing to achieve absolutely nothing? It is out of scope. There is no doubt about that. Thank you, Councillor Evans. It does affect our borough, and it, I'm sorry, it isn't a point of order. It doesn't, doesn't breach. Terribly, terribly disappointing. So, second point of order, as we've seen tonight from Councillor Ross, at point of order 13.6, withdrawal of a motion. A member may withdraw a motion when he or she, which he or she has moved. And I invite the Green colleague to withdraw this motion is a cynical attempt for both publicity and to solicit disaffected votes from other parties. It will do nothing, That's absolutely not a point of nothing, order, to foster Councillor Evans. goodwill in Trafford. I urge you to withdraw it. It's not a point of order, Councillor Evans. Thank you. Can we continue, please? Councillor Coggins, you have one minute to move the motion. Thank you, Mayor. We recently all supported a Conservative debate, not hate motion, and it is in that spirit that we bring this motion on Israel and Gaza tonight. We may disagree, but we ask to disagree well. This motion calls for an immediate bilateral ceasefire. We bring it knowing that many innocent Israeli people are still held hostage after nearly six months in unimaginable circumstances. That famine in Gaza is imminent, but also unbearably avoidable and that around 70% of those killed have been women and children. But it is not just a motion about events far away. We have brought it because of the impacts of people here in Trafford. It is a small and very imperfect attempt to say that we see your grief and we feel your anger, and we will not accept anti-Semitism or Islamophobia here in Trafford. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Is that motion seconded, please? Thank you, Mayor. What we've seen in Israel and in Gaza has been painful to watch. The human cost has been devastating. And in a globalised world, events on the other side of the globe have real and devastating consequences for people here in Trafford. There are people in our communities who are worried about family members in Gaza and in Israel. There are people in our communities who are grieving. And there are people in our communities who feel unsafe and uncertain about the future. Madam Mayor, Trafford Council is not the Foreign Office, but we can be a positive force here in our own communities. Trafford Liberal Democrats stand resolutely behind calls for an immediate bilateral ceasefire. But as a council, our focus must be on forging deeper and stronger bonds with both the Islamic and the Jewish communities that we represent here in Trafford. That is what is at the front of my mind as I second this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I have received notice of amendments to this motion. And Councillor Sophie Taylor, you've got one minute to move the amendment, please. Thank you, Mayor. The Labour Group is pleased to support the amended motion. This is a very dark time in the world and the scale of human suffering we continue to witness daily is horrifying and deeply distressing. We condemn unreservedly the violence, death and destruction inflicted on innocent civilians in Gaza and Israel. Gaza is facing a monumental humanitarian crisis. There must be an immediate ceasefire if any kind of peaceful solution is to be found. We know there is real pain in our communities here in Trafford. Trafford is a diverse, inclusive and welcoming borough as exemplified in Old Trafford, the ward which I am honoured to represent. 
We should stand shoulder to shoulder with our fellow citizens, those of all faiths and none across the political spectrum. Now is not a time for division. We may feel powerless to influence geopolitical turmoil many miles away, but we can reach out to our brothers and sisters within our communities and show the world that Trafford is a caring, compassionate and peace-loving borough. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Barrett, is that seconded, please? Thank you, Mayor. Last Friday, an imam in Gaza stood up to offer the sermon before the Friday prayers. And he said, and I quote, what do I say and who do I address? The killings of 30,000 Gazans have not woken up the leaders of the world to unanimously agree to a ceasefire, to call to a ceasefire. Dear Mayor, calling for a ceasefire means no more innocent deaths, supply of food and medicines and goods for those who are facing the biggest humanitarian crisis in modern times. Sadly, this government could have done so much to protect the innocent's life in Gaza. Here in Trafford, it's not just the Muslim community, but other communities are upset with the shameful role this government has played in the crisis. And can I say to Councillor Evans, the people who lost their lives in Gaza were real people with real dreams and with real hopes. The people who we have just seen outside this council building protesting. They are real people. They are from Trafford. I'm supporting this motion because it reflects solidarity with our communities and acknowledges their pain. This further shows empathy with our communities during this difficult time when fostering unity and support is crucial. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. The amendment has been moved and seconded. Sorry. Yes. The, movement, <laughs> the amendment has been moved and seconded. Sorry, and Madam, now Mayor, Madam Mayor, speeches. I moved the point of order. I didn't speak to the, to the motion. Yeah, we well, the sp we sp we're speaking to the amendment. Thank you. The amendment has been moved and seconded. I now invite one minute speeches on the, in respect of the amendment only. Thank you. Can we have speakers on behalf of the Conservative Party? And thank you. Apologies, Madam Mayor. Thank you. No good will come of this. As I have alluded to, this is a cynical attempt on behalf of the Greens, and I'm shocked at the Lib Dems for supporting it, for publicity and attention. It cannot and will not assist anyone here in Trafford. We should not be debating it as highlighted by our first motion. Nothing we say here will have any effect anywhere. It will only stoke division amongst our communities and claim <clears throat> from the proposer to the contrary is wrong. We know it's wrong, she knows it's wrong, all members know it's wrong, and our observers know it's wrong. All this will create is division. The motion is unamendable. We, the Conservative group, will have nothing to do with it whatsoever, as giving it engagement suggests it has some credence. I would, all, and, and I would urge all members to not engage. Some have clearly absented themselves tonight. We will not be voting for it. We will not be voting against it. We will not be abstaining. We would like to walk out of the chamber, but we will remain. And we will not be voting. It Thank is beyond you, our responsibilities, Thank you beyond so much. our scope of this Thank council. You, it is a total Thank disgrace. You. Is there a speaker on behalf of the Liberal Democrats, please? Thank you, Mayor. We are supportive of the amendment. I spoke earlier about the council's response and the need for meaningful community outreach. The Liberal Democrat councillors have played a small role in helping to facilitate that work, and the council's leadership has made a meaningful start. The motion talks about humanitarian aid, and I want to finish by doing the same if I can. Madam Mayor, last summer when you were nominated to become our mayor, you chose Doctors Without Borders as one of the charities you would support this year. Surrounded by the very worst of what humanity is capable of, it is humanitarian aid workers who demonstrate the very best. We encourage those who can in these difficult times to donate to organisations who are putting humanity first. And later, our Trafford Liberal Democrat web pages will be sharing donation links to your chosen charity, Doctors Without Borders. Liberal Democrats fully support the motion and the amendment, and we continue to serve an open, tolerant and united Trafford. Thank you, Councillor. Is there a speaker on behalf of the Green Party, please? Thank you. So I just want to speak, obviously, to the amendment that's been brought um, to highlight that 
Every single report of sexual violence against women and girls in Israel and Gaza needs to be investigated, and it's imperative that anyone who has committed war crimes is prosecuted. The sheer horror of victim, inflicted on victims in this conflict goes far beyond anything that any of us can likely ever imagine. They are war crimes and a crime against humanity under international humanitarian law. The sexual crimes reported against hostages by Hamas and those in Gaza are clear violations of human rights. Proper funding of the aid agencies and charities who are responding to and treating victims of sexual crimes is crucial. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Coggins, you have, one, you have 30 seconds to write a reply. Thank you. Uh, thank you. As Councillor Spencer said, we're happy to accept most of this as a friendly amendment. We are uncomfortable with some of the wording around the two-state solution. Uh, as Greens, we believe that we need to approach this with a post-colonial mindset and that it, isn't, it is for people living in that part of the world to decide how many states there should be. Uh, so uh, as a result, we will abstain on the Labour amendment, but we accept the rest of it as, as friendly. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I will now put the amendment to the vote. And can I have a show of hands, please? And please keep your hands raised while the record is being taken. All those in favour? All those against? Are there any abstentions? The amendment is carried. We will now have a debate on the original motion, which becomes an assumptive motion. Is there a speaker, please, on behalf of the Labour Party? And you've got one minute. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd like to remind people of the words I used in the January Council meeting. They are all there, still on record and on record. Our Jewish community is feeling a lot of pain at the moment. Our Muslim community are feeling a lot of pain at the moment. The best thing we can all do is promote dialogue and cohesion. And I intend to continue doing that with both our Jewish communities and our Muslim communities. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Is there a speaker on behalf of the Conservative group, please? No, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Is there a speaker on behalf of the Liberal Democrats, please? Madam Mayor, on this occasion, I'd like to join with the words that Councillor Ross has just, has just said. Um, it, really, the only response for a local authority is to promote dialogue amongst the communities, both Muslim and Jewish. It's our honour to serve. Thank you. Councillor Coggins, you have a right to reply, and you've got 30 seconds, please. Thank you. I was told I would have a minute. Um, with some uh, caution, we will vote for the motion as amended, having put on record our thoughts about the Labour amendment. We don't think the motion is perfect. We wanted to find as much agreement as we could and focus on the local impacts. Um, I feel like I need to address the Conservative comments, although I'm not sure what to say. I think Councillor Ross has said it very well. This motion is an authentic attempt to tell our Jewish and Muslim communities that we hear their pain. This is... Okay. Um, and I want to also thank those we consulted very widely on this. I want to thank those who we consulted. I want to thank the Liberal Democrats for seconding it because working cross-party on this was quite important to us. And I particularly want to thank those who disagree with our position uh, but who nonetheless talked with us about it. Thank you. Thank you. I will now put the motion to the vote. And can I have a show of hands, please, and keep your hands raised while the record is being taken. All those in favour? All those against? Are there any abstentions? The motion is carried. No. 
Motion 7H, we are running out of time. And could I ask if the proposer wanted to withdraw the motion and have it at the next council meeting, or if to reduce the time um, because we need to finish at 9.30? Uh, as the proposer and as there is no guarantee I will be here at the next council meeting, I will not be withdrawing it. Just Thank you. So we'll, we're reducing the speeches to 30 seconds to get this motion finished. Thank you. Um, Councillor Sutton, you have 30 seconds. Thank you. This council has set a vision zero target, um, a target reducing deaths and serious injuries to zero. Uh, pavements obstructed by parked vehicles are completely incompatible by the, with this. The information I've obtained from GMP shows they don't actually know whether they ever use their powers to act on vehicular obstructions on pavements. Uh, we need them to record this data. We need that in order to be able to work towards Vision Zero. Um, and more substantially, uh, we, we were going to be saying happy 50th birthday to Traffic Council at this meeting. Uh, also happy birthday to the pavement parking ban in Greater London. We need the same. Thank you. Is there a speaker from the Labour Party, please? You've got 30 seconds. So, sorry, is that seconded, please? 30 it, seconds. Thank it you. is, thank you. Just to say that the damage that pavement parking does to our pavements is also relevant to this debate, given that it is pedestrians, particularly the most vulnerable, that suffer from uneven and broken surfaces, and it's our council that foots the bill for repairs. This motion seeks to improve the information available about existing enforcement and increase awareness among council staff and contractors about what should be reported and how to do it. I do hope that fellow members will join us in support. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Is there a speaker from the Labour Party, please? 30 seconds. Thank you, Chair. The Labour Group will be supporting this motion this evening. I've made very similar representations to Greater Manchester Police in public meetings of the Greater Manchester B Network Committee. I will continue to do so. Um, so we will be supporting this motion, and I'll send to the Green colleagues in the Green Party um, further comments that I was going to contribute in the debate, given the time constraints. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Is there a speaker on behalf of the Conservative Party, please? We support the motion. 30 seconds. Thank you. Is there a speaker on behalf of the Liberal Democrats, please? Yeah. Thank you. Yes. 30 so seconds. On behalf of the Liberal Democrats, we are supporting this motion. Just to remind it that in November 2014, Timply Liberal Democrats launched a Pavement Are For People's campaign that was backed up at the time by Trafford Council Parking Services. We produced a Trafford endorsed leaflet to place on offending cars. We work with local schools to encourage parents to think twice about where to park. We wholeheartedly support this motion to get proper enforcement where there are obstructions on the pavement. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, thank you. Uh, we'll now put the motion to the vote. And can I have a show of hands, please, and keep your hands raised while the vote is being taken. All those in favour? All those against? Are there any abstentions? The motion is carried. The motion is carried, and thank you very much. This is the end of the meeting, and I would like to invite you all back to the uh, parlour afterwards for some refreshments. Thank you so much. With a minute to spare. <laughs> well done. That was easy. That was really difficult. You did really well. Thank you. You did very well.